morning, everyone, and welcome to the Monroe County regular session meeting for Tuesday, July 14th. I'm Eric Spoonmore, president of the Monroe County Council. It is 5.31 p.m., and we are now called to order. Thank you all for joining us. Looks like we have another big uh, crowd here tonight. Uh, it does appear that we have a quorum present. Uh, council members, I'll ask at this time that you unmute your microphones and please confirm your attendance when I call your name. I know I uh, just received a, a last minute message from Council Member Munson, uh, will not be able to join us tonight, it appears. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and call the roll. Uh, Council Member Deckard? Here. Council Member Hawk? Yes. Council Member Iverson? Here. Council Member McKim? Here. Council Member Munson? As I stated before, uh, Ms. Munson won't be able to join us tonight. Uh, and uh, finally, Council Member Wilts. Here. Okay, the chair recognizes a quorum as present and we'll now proceed to the next items on our agenda. Up next is our Pledge of Allegiance. So we'll stand for this, do the pledge. Allegiance to the flag. The United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. And now our next item will be uh, public comment for items not on the agenda. Um, so if you have a public comment for an item that's not on the agenda tonight, this is your time to speak. Uh, we clearly have a significant number of people uh, present here tonight, and I wanna make sure everyone has the opportunity to speak. Uh, we do have other business items that we need to consider tonight as well. So here's what I'm going to propose. Uh, we'll take this next hour for public comment and each speaker will have two minutes during that hour. Once that hour of time is concluded, uh, we'll then take a, a pause on the public comment to move into our business items for the evening, uh, which I believe we should be able to move through pretty quickly, I hope, keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, once we have concluded all of our business items, we'll then uh, return to the public comment until each speaker has been heard. And uh, so I guess I'd like to see how my colleagues uh, feel about this uh, and if you all agree to this suggestion and then uh, we can just do kind of a quick roll call vote uh, to approve these uh, proposed rules. Is there any discussion? So I don't see any. Uh, Ms. Shell, can we uh, do a quick roll call vote please just to approve the rules for public comment? Councillor McCann? Yes. Councillor Wilt? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Spoonler? Yes. Motion passed. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. So we will uh, we'll start with public comment, and this will be in. Uh, first come, first serve order. So those of you who would like to speak, uh, please uh, indicate by raising your hand in the, uh, in the Zoom feature. Our TSD department will identify you and uh, we'll open your microphone to allow uh, your comments to be made. Each commenter will have two minutes and then we'll move on to the next speaker. And I'm ready whenever, whenever TSD is, is ready. Okay, I'm gonna do a test sound of the chime that's gonna happen at 30 seconds remaining. Um, if you can let me know if you can hear it. Okay, 
Uh, it looks like it might not be working right now. Um, if it's acceptable to you, I will do the uh, timer on screen. Is that all right? I, I heard the tone. I heard it just fine. It oh, yep. okay. So yep. only I can't hear it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, the, tone, the tone worked. Uh, so that will be, thank you very much uh, to our uh, uh, technical services department for um, facilitating uh, the public comment portion here. So that tone will be the tone that speakers will hear when they have 30 seconds remaining on their comments. Once that, uh, once the two minutes expires, the microphone automatically shuts off and we move to the next commenter. So, okay, well, thank you all. Um, and we'll move into, uh, into public comment now for items not on the agenda. Right, first up is um, Christine Conrad. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yes. I bring to the table this evening a subject that came across my desk this week, watching a Zoom meeting of the April 2020 election board. I'm reminded that in July of 1990, our government passed the amazing ADA law. The fact that it's been 30 years ago stuns my brain. When this law was passed, I was a licensed nursing home administrator functioning, caring for development, developmentally disabled and people with all sorts and conditions of medical disabilities and conditions. While watching the April meeting, I was reminded of an individual in our community that you may be familiar with, Brandy Paul. He's been a very visible and active member of our community, struggling with keeping in front of us issues relevant to handicap accessibility and parking so that the individuals with disabilities can achieve attendance at meetings just like I'm able to do. I can drive and park my car and get out of my car and walk upstairs and into the spaces that meetings are held. An individual that's wheelchair bound does their walking with I like to think that what we will want to do is have all of the access around the courthouse and any public buildings be with that in mind. We we'll encourage you to take a look at the spaces that are currently existing around the courthouse and remind us that some of those spaces are really not conducive for handicapped parking for individuals that might need to arrive in wheelchairs or walkers. I'll encourage you to just take a look at Thank you for your comments. We'll move on to our next speaker. Next listed is a Ben. Welcome, Ben. Could you please state your name, first and last name for the record? Sure, Ben Muncy. Thank you. It's fine as well. First paragraph of the Constitution of the State of Indiana states that justice be established, public order maintained, and liberty perpetuated. In the very next paragraph of our state constitution, it reads that all power is inherent in the people and that all free government is founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and well-being. Citizens of the State of Indiana have the right to public order and they have the right and safety. Without sufficient law enforcement in place to enforce laws, some people within our communities will have no deterrent from breaking the law, and citizens will have little to no support in protecting themselves and their property. We've seen in recent days what happens when those who have authority to enforce the law are restrained or removed from their positions. Communities and cities are ran, homes and businesses are destroyed. In the 80s and 90s, large cities were in crisis because crime continued to grow and spread. The most effective deterrent to crime came in the form of increased police forces and increased patrols. And as police departments increased and patrols in crime areas increased, the crime rate decreased. It's effective to reduce the funding of our county sheriff's department when the department is already operating at only half of its recommended force. 
the sale of guns to individuals has drastically increased the past three months because people are afraid that police departments will be defunded and we will be left to fend for ourselves. We are trained to deal with volatile situations, but by reducing their less trained citizens to handle these situations on their own. By decreasing the funding for law enforcement, crime will increase and regular citizens will be left to fend for themselves. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Randy Paul. Welcome, Mr. Paul. Hi, can you, hear, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. I just wanted to give the council a quick update on the ADA work we've been doing, especially since I asked several of you to help uh, and many of you have reached out and expressed concern, but you can stop your work. We're done. Uh, County Commissioner has just turned down my offer this Monday. So what I've been trying to avoid for 15 years is we're going to go to litigation. Uh, my role is going to change that most of my time is going to be spent organizing that record for the attorneys. It's extensive. It goes back to 2008. Um, and so instead of seeing me so many times in meetings, you're going to see people like the speaker just uh, you just had, Christine, and they're going to help out trying to keep this issue in front of the public to try to make sure that people know about the ADA. Um, and I guess, you know, all I can say is I'm sorry we're to this point. I tried very, very hard over 15 years to keep us from going to court, uh, but it, apparently that's the only way we're going to get this done. So thanks for your help. Uh, and I will probably talk to you later. Thanks. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Paul. Uh, next up is Alex Goodlett. Welcome. Can, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. So um, I would just like to say that, uh, just talk about the last uh, meeting, um, I think it was June 30th. Um, it was terribly done. And it appears that, you know, by um, Eric Spoonmore and uh, Marty Hawk, I saw that Facebook thread, the feeling is mutual. Um, a few ways that I propose to uh, change that and a few ways that I think, you know, you don't really have a choice in the matter to change it is to, one, allow the Zoom webinar chat to reactivate that. Um, I have in front of me on my computer the, um, what's it called, the, the Indiana um, State Constitution. And here's what it says. Uh, Section 31, Article 1 is the right of assemblage and petition. And I'd like to read that. It says, no law shall restrain the inhabitants of the state from assembling together in a peaceful manner to consult their common good nor from instructing their representatives, nor from applying to the General Assembly for redress of grievances. And by disabling the Zoom chat, you are restricting the constituents from, you know, their uh, right of assemblaging petition. So um, I would just like you guys to keep that in mind. And, um, and also something to bear in mind is that, like, I'm not sure if I'm 30 seconds yet, probably getting pretty close. Um, but, you know, um, you should probably give like a 10 second um, comment because, um, yeah, so here we go. 30 seconds. I have, I have a timer, thank God, because I don't want to be cut just in the middle abruptly. So um, maybe work on that. And then finally, I don't really have enough time to say, you know, everything I want to say. I'll, you know, give you a, a live email update. But uh I think what Marty Hawk said, you know, in, in her meme that she later, you know, either hit or delete because it was embarrassing. It's pretty terrible. Um, it says, Lord, please give me patience because if you give me strength. Thank you for your comments. Next up is uh, screen name uh, DEB059. Welcome, could you please state your name for the record? Yes, this is Debbie Day, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Great, I'm gonna be a little bit more grassroots probably. I wanna echo what Ben Muncy has said. As a longtime resident of the city of Ellisville, I have had occasion to use Monroe County Sheriff's Department and I, it's harder because we're a little far out, 
I don't want to lose those services. I believe strongly you don't throw out the baby with the wash. And also, I am not replying in my role as that, but I cannot separate the fact that I am a school nurse. And I don't want to lose any of the valuable services of the school resource officers to prevent violence or to at least lessen the chances of violence in the schools. We're already dealing with enough with COVID-19. And I cannot say passionately enough how strongly I espouse that if there are problems with police work, you fix the problems. You do not defund them. And I wondered if anybody's ever asked the social workers if they actually want to be there in situations. They're already in many situations where their lives are at risk. And I can't imagine them wanting to do that as the first line without some appropriate safety features, such as the police officers. And that's all I have to say. I'm gonna be the only one that we didn't have to kick off. Thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Next up is Nathan Mutchler. Good afternoon. Um, I would like to echo Alex and other people's comments about how frustrated and disappointed I am in this body for the way the meetings are conducted so that we cannot see how many other people are there. We cannot communicate in the chat. Uh, I would love to respond to the previous comments pointing to a Washington Post article showing there is not a correlation between police spending and crime. I would love to point to a New York Times article showing an increase in racial violence on using school officers, but I can't have that conversation because the chat is closed. So none of, and I can't respond and hear and learn more from my fellow citizens. Um, Bloomington's been in the news, Monroe County's been in the news. And I heard a lot of people and I would imagine many people with the authority such as yours have thought, man, this makes us look bad. And you know what's funny? Nothing changed over the last week. It's not like suddenly, magically, we had a new population or a, a new, new demographic or anything. This is the same county we've all lived in. It just happened. It happened and it made it onto the national news. So if you don't want to be back here in two weeks, a month, a year, having the same conversation, except after an even undescribable, I can't, I can't bring myself to say the words of what, what might happen next. Let's take action now, use your authority with grace and imagination to solve these problems so that the next time we talk, we can all stand here and say, you know what, we did everything we could, not just what we were supposed to. We did everything we could so we can be proud of how. Thank you for your comments. Next up is screen name Jan. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Jan Wesson, and I just want to say that I appreciate the Sheriff's Department and hope that you don't defund it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next up is um, uh, Frank F. Welcome, Frank. Hi, uh, my name is Frank Fisher. I wanted to speak basically on the uh, funding for the sheriff. Uh, We've been in uh, Monroe County for about 38 years. Uh, I know a few of the sheriff's uh, officers, a couple of them basically have known since they were eight, nine years old. Uh, they've been part of this community, grew with the community, and basically served the community now. And I think we deserve to base, they deserve to be supported. And I think they, uh, most of our sheriff people, and I, I can't speak for all of them, but the ones I know are great people that need supported. And that's all we have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher, for your comments.
Next up is Kathy Abel. Welcome. Hi, my name is Kathy Abel and I live in Northwest Monroe County near Steinsville. And I just want to show my support tonight for our Sheriff's Department. Out in our area, we don't have um, a lot of law enforcement. We're in a, a very rural area. Um, our children are supported by the Richland Bean Blossom Schools. And I know the school resource officers uh, do a lot of work at the Richland Bean Blossom Schools. And uh, I agree with Ben Muncie and Deb, the earlier speaker, uh, when I say that um, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, you, you tackle tough problems and issues, but you don't completely dismantle a law enforcement uh, organization in order uh, to solve some of these problems. They're difficult, yes, but they can be solved in other ways other than defunding a perfectly good sheriff's department. Um, that's really all I have to say. I am 100% supportive of our Sheriff's Department. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Abel. Next up is Kimberly McGuire. Welcome. Welcome, Ms. McGuire. Looks like we... Ms. McGuire, are you there? Looks like we're not getting a, uh, a connection on Ms. McGuire. Do we want to... Um, and Ms. McGuire, please, please feel free to also, if you can hear us, please feel free to contact the council office. Uh, unfortunately, we can't hear you here tonight. Please feel free to contact the council office. The email address is on our website. Uh, we'd very much appreciate hearing your uh, input. We'll move on to the next uh, speaker. Okay, uh, next up is um, Eric Rasmussen. Welcome, Mr. Rasmussen. Thank you. Uh, Nathan and Alex, good point on open meetings. Uh, do I smell a lawsuit coming? Uh, I'll help, maybe. On the Sheriff's Department, I think we should defund the police. You may have heard the story of Christy Bennett. six-year-old lady who was driving downtown to BLM protesters block the street illegally and assault the car. The Bloomington Police Department is on the side. We ought to defund the Bloomington Police Department. We do need police, of course, so long as we enforce laws and break them. So city should be defund the police, but defund the bad police, not the good police. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is a Carol C. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Carol Canfield, lifelong resident of Monroe County. The first obligation of the government is the safety of the people. If you decrease or eliminate funding for our sheriff's department, you neglect this duty. This approach has failed miserably elsewhere and has endangered countless lives. Let's not make the same mistake. Don't jump on a bandwagon just because it's seemingly popular. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next up is screen name uh, Jean North. Welcome. Well, 
Looks like the microphone is still muted. There we go. Try that. How about now? There we go. Uh, manpower is already short based upon national suggestion. We have 45 officers and we should have 85 in the sheriff department. They patrol approximately 411 square miles with an, an annual average of approximately 3,000 runs per month. The negative impact of defunding the police, the sheriff's department would be on neighborhoods and homeowners businesses, business growth, attracting new residents, crime, youth, public safety, um, home values, and general quality of life. I'm going to sum it up by asking a question. At what cost? In my opinion, history upholds that when law enforcement steps back, lawlessness and extremism will fill all the voids. Authority and application of law is a fundamental component of a functioning society in order for anarchy to not rule. I implore you not only to avoid any defunding at the sheriff department or other police entity, but to increase funding if possible. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments, sir. Next up is Gina Arthur. Welcome. Hi, thank you for letting me speak today. What I'm going to say comes from a world without police at riseup.net. Cops don't just kill. They patrol schools, hospitals, and public transit. In most cities, they roam the hallways and walkways and housing projects and apartment complexes. They are stationed in the welfare office, the Walmart, the movie theater, the park. In all these spaces, they enforce white supremacy and protect property over human life. In fact, they carry out a vital task for capitalism, disciplining the poor, the black, the queer, the indigenous, the trans, the non-white and disabled people into accepting deteriorating living conditions, reproducing their social difference and isolation and punishing any and all that dissent against, against this status quo of alienation and exploitation. How can we change this? First, we can rely on each other in the community rather than the police. Second, we can build fighting organizations for the people. Third, we can develop cop-free zones in our communities. Some specific examples are developing community phone trees and rapid response networks. We could study and share conflict mediation skills. We could build survivor-led groups to defend against domestic violence and sexual assault. We could build tenant unions, solidarity networks, eviction defense groups. In the streets, we could refuse to talk to the police, build neighborhood networks, and basically work together as a community. We cannot trust the police. They've proven that time and time. That's all I have. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Candace Sampson. Welcome, Ms. Sampson. Hi, sorry, of course someone's knocking at my, on my door right now and my dog's barking. Is there any way you can come right back to me? That like the next person, it's all happening right now. Yes, that's fine. We'll, we'll come right back to you on the next step. These are the things that happen when we're on uh, Zoom. I, it happens to me every day in my work life. <laughs> next is Vicki Rushing. Welcome, Miss Rushing. I need to unmute your microphone. There, there. Go. are we good? <laughs> All good. Okay, I am here in support of the Monroe County Sheriff's Department and do not feel that you should in any way consider defunding them. Um, 
they are amazing individuals and nothing but respectful and um, just extremely, just a moment. Mom, I can't hear. Um, we had some background noise, sorry. <laughs> um, they are the most professional individuals that I've had interactions with. They're needed in this community. I know several of them personally, and they offer their time and resources for free at, at schools, and they show up there even though they're not contracted resource officers. They make a presence at um, arrival and dismissal times. Uh, try to bond with the children there. Just, I cannot say enough positive things about Monroe County Sheriff's Department and the individuals that work there. Uh, they uphold the Constitution incredibly, and it would be a disservice to this community to even consider defunding them. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. We'll uh, check back in now with Ms. Sampson. Hi there. Can you hear me now? Yes. Welcome. Okay. I'm so sorry for that interruption. It was the craziest timing. But anyway, um, I just wanted to thank you for uh, letting us speak. I've never spoke at one of these meetings before, but I appreciate it. So maybe I'll do this more often. Um, but I wanted to support the, hang on. I wanted to voice my support for the Sheriff's Department. I wanted to echo all of the statements that have already been made earlier uh, by some of the people in support of the department. I think that it's a completely ludicrous idea uh, this defunding is becoming the new trend, a symptom of uh, a much greater social movement, but I think it's not really uh, rooted in much uh, logic or any real merit. Um, I would agree that um, perhaps more funding, more resources, more community policing programs to uh, foster, you know, further, you know, good relations with the citizens and the police, um, and, you know, Sheriff's Department is specifically is, you know, on the table, but I just can't believe that this is even a consideration that would even really be taken seriously. I mean, if there are issues, as people have stated, I mean, let's focus on those issues. Apparently, uh, there isn't a large enough force for the, the miles in, in Monroe County, so to further take that away makes uh, no sense to me. I mean, it just seems completely illogical. So um, I, you know, I was born and raised here. I'm raising children here. They're going to school here. I pay taxes here. I vote here. I'm speaking for many, many other citizens that feel the same way I do. We want to live in a safe community. We want to, we don't want social workers, um, you know, being put in harm's way even further or taken away from their caseload. We don't want EMTs uh, not able to save a life because the police haven't been there to clear the area as is, I guess, standard procedure now. If we're already lacking in enough law enforcement to cover our county, why would we further decrease that? As I said, if there's a Thank you, Ms. Sampson, for your comments. Next up is Randy Jacobs. Welcome, Mr. Jacobs. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Randy Jacobs. I'm a lifelong Monroe County resident, as well as Monroe County Sheriff's deputy for over 20 years. I oppose the idea of defunding the sheriff's office for several reasons and offer a solution. First of all, the idea of taking any funds away from the sheriff's office would be detrimental to the community. I can say this because I'm familiar with the annual budget and how difficult it is for our office to stay within the distributed <clears throat> or what is distributed to meet our equipment, training, and salary needs. According to the national data, data, our department is already half the size it should be in relation to population. To date, 41 deputies have filled just under 19,000 calls for service. We are, communities, we are the community's first line of defense and where people look to for help. I understand the concept of alternative approach to dealing with non-police issues. However, it is... I apologize, there was a technical error, one moment.
Randy, please go ahead. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not sure where I left off at. Just, you can go ahead and repeat the, repeat the comment. Okay. So uh, first off, I'm against the idea of defunding the sheriff's office. It would be detrimental to the community. I can say this because I'm familiar with the annual budget and how difficult it is for our office to stay within a distributed amount of money meet, uh, needed to meet our equipment training and salary needs. According to the national data, our department is already half the size it should be in relation to population. To date, 41 deputies have fielded just under 19,000 calls for service. Uh, we are the community's first line of defense and where people look to for help. I understand the concept of alternative approach to dealing with non-police issues. However, it does not eliminate initial response by police. Something may seem like an innocent problem to start out with, but can turn dangerous at any time. I've seen this and experienced these situations time after time. So what's the solution? The solution is to audit other non-essential or over-budgeted parts for, of the county. For example, the county makes donations throughout the year, as well as we could look to a situation where we saw with the stormwater division. We did not defund Monroe County Highway Department when we came up with the stormwater division. The county came up with a $40 tax on every property owner to fill this need. I don't see the difference. Our population and calls for service are just going up each year and not going down. The first responders are not the slush fund. We are needed. We care about the community and the safety of everyone. Please seek an alternative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs, for your comments. Next up is Karen Scherfick. Hello, Ms. Scherfick. You may need to unmute your microphone. Let me know. Can there you hear go. me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Um, as a Monroe County resident, taxpayer, and a voter for the last 28 years, um, I want to voice my support for the Sheriff's Department and that I support fully funding them. I believe that law enforcement is essential in our community to ensure our safety of our families. I use students coming in from abroad, um, and I have sent you guys a letter that what had happened to my son and I on Kirkwood, um, and also that I've had, a, had a, an experience that we had someone around our home, and we were told that there was no officer that would be available because they were on the other side of the county. Um, I also work in the school system, and the resource officers there have been tremendous as far as helping the children and having a good positive uh, relationship with them, and I just support fully funding them. We need them. Thank you for your comments. Next up is a Susie. Welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I have two main points to make. The first is that I attended the June 4th County Council meeting um, where over 200 members of the public attended um, and I counted at least 30 comments um, requesting that the County Council maintain the freeze in hiring law enforcement officers for the county. Um, it was so clear that this was a, a public urge, it, that this was something the public desperately cared about, that you, the County Council, decided to make a special meeting to discuss it further and to hear more of those opinions. Um, that was on June 30th. So during that meeting on June 30th, one of the discussion points presented was the relationship between the Sheriff's Department and the public, as well as public trust. The Sheriff was not present and no one from the Sheriff's Department was present, which as a person attending that meeting spoke volumes about the department's interest in building or maintaining or developing any new public trust. It has since come to my attention that the Sheriff's Department went ahead and hired the two deputies in the last two weeks whose hiring uh, the county council had decided to push pause on or had agreed with the um, sheriff's decision to rescind the request to hire them um, in that very initial meeting. So we went through all of these meetings to tell you how we felt, to tell you what the public feels about hiring new sheriff's deputies, to tell you, please maintain the, the, the freeze. Um, and then 
this is what the Sheriff's Department chose to do. So if you guys would like to discuss the Sheriff's Department and public trust, I would point to one, the lack of representation of the Sheriff's Department at the conversation about public trust, and two, the way they chose to go about these hirings. The second thing I would like to say is that I do not know the rules personally for how county council members are allowed to share their opinions in the public outside of these meetings. However, Marty Hawk put out a request on Facebook asking people to call in about a very specific point. Not asking to call in about it, but asking them to say very specific things. And I think that may have been an overstep on her part. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Virginia Jackson. Welcome. You may need to un unmute your microphone. Hi guys, my name is Virginia Jackson and I am 77 years old. I live here in Monroe County and it, as far as I'm concerned, it's a must that we have our police officers, our sheriffs. I've needed them. They've been there. They're kind. They're gracious. They do. They go way above and beyond what they're paid to do. I can't understand these people that think they can get neighbors to get in a group and say, okay, we're going to be good, all of us. Well, what about the person that comes in behind us, not these neighbors, and then they need a sheriff? Who's going to take care of that? Are any of you council people going to be on the phone so I can call and say, hey, I need help. Get here instantly. No, but boy, your insurance department does. And I can't even believe that anyone at all would want to defund. They don't make the greatest amount of money right now. But by golly, they serve their country and their duty to here in Monroe County. And I absolutely think they should be hired. I don't care about the freeze. Find it somewhere else. We need protection. Our county is a good county. So far, we're doing well. But if you start taking things away from these people that are being uh, defunct the police that are taking care of me and you and your children, the schools, the hospitals, all the people on the road. I've seen police officers I personally know police officers were an elderly person run out of gas. He, he goes and takes her and gets her gas, buys it for her, comes back and puts it in her car. I know that. Now, what if someone else with nothing good in their mind come up on that poor person? What do you think they do? But this police officer didn't. Also, I've seen them. Sorry, the time expired there, Ms. Jackson, but thank you for your comments. Next up is Nicholas Petrick. Hi, friends. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, for the record, my name is Nicholas Petrie and I use he, him pronouns. Um, you're probably getting used to seeing my name during the meetings and in your inbox. So thank you for all of you who have been responsive to what I've had to say. Um, my comment today will be short and specific, which is that I wanted to bring to your attention again um, to the anti-racist policy training that Black Lives Matter Bloomington is asking all elected officials to take part in. Um, I understand that the council must secure funding to compensate these trainers, um, but I wanted to remind you that where you put your money shows what you value, and we are telling you to please value Black lives and anti-racism. So please find the money, however much is needed, and take the training as soon as possible. Um, thanks so much, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Petrie. Next up is screen name MK. Welcome. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thanks for having me on. Um, I am a, uh, a wife of a Lieutenant of the Monroe County Sheriff's Department. Um, 22 years and counting that we have been serving this community. We've been here lifelong residents. Um, I wanted to st step on and say that my husband and all of his officers, um, all the folks that he works with um, across across the board are 
professional, law-abiding, caring, concerned, passionate, serving individuals. Um, I would like to say that um, that I, I do support the Sheriff's Department fully and 100% with my whole heart. Um, my husband and his officers, um, they all serve without regard to their own safety. Um, without regard, they go whether they can be on duty or not, they go. If they're sick, they go. If they are in the midst of an emergency, they leave their families to go and do so. Um, our families are serving in that way, in that respect, too. Um, we hold this line for the entire community. Um, I would just like to say that my husband and his officers, um, the, the many that, that, that serve in every regard and capacity, do so to save lives and to, um, to serve those that they can reach out to all humanity without regard for who's on the other side of that door, without regard for well, of identities or labels. They go, they serve, and they protect, and we need them. Um, I think my time's up. I've got a <laughs> thousand more things to say, but I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Much respect for what you do as well with all the decisions you must make. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your comments. Next up is Mr. and Mrs. Parks. Can you Welcome. hear me now? Yes. Welcome. Hi. My name is Keith Parks, and me and my wife here live here in Monroe County, and we're very proud of the service our sheriff's department does, and we want to call in and support them. And I won't reiterate all the things, but what Mr. Gene North said was very interesting and very informative. We just want to thank our police department, and we're thankful for them. And thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Jack Schmidt. Yes, I'm just calling to again provide support, like all I've heard tonight, as far as the Sheriff's Department. I'd like to encourage you not only to support the full funding of the department, but also to get it to the level that we need compared to other cities across the country as well of our size. I've been in this city, or in this city actually for 32 years and felt very safe here uh, on all aspects of my work, my walk, anything that I've done in the community. And so I do not believe the hysteria that's out there about defunding police. But I also want to encourage those who think they wanna try something different to begin in their own small precincts. And if they can demonstrate that they could not call police and have their little neighborhoods safe and not having to call 911, then they can prove to us in a year or two how that might actually work. But to actually do this and having large cuts is preposterous on so many levels. So experiment please, but do not take the funding away from our Sheriff's Department or any other services that we need to keep our community safe and stable. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt, for your comments. Next up is screen name Galaxy S9 Plus. This may be... Um... Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Could you state your name for the record, please? My name is Marsala Bolin. I'm a lifelong Monroe County resident, and I am on in support of keeping our sheriff's department funded, as well as we need increased uh, sheriff's deputies because we are way under what we should have. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of our law, law enforcement officers who are listening, as well as 
Marty Hawk for getting the word out because had she have not gotten the word out, some of us who are busy working so that we can pay our property taxes would have never even known that this was even being considered. And I'm absolutely appalled that it is being considered because the city of Bloomington has been um, welcoming criminals out of prisons to be dropped off in Bloomington for years now. And uh, just a couple of years ago, I worked downtown they were taking over downtown until some of the IU parents saw them when they were pretty much camping out on Kirkwood and the courthouse lawn. And then Mayor Hamilton decided to push them all down south. Well, guess what? I will live on the south side of Bloomington, okay? I'm a county resident. And you're pushing all of the criminals down on the south side of Bloomington. And they're black and white. and City of Bloomington decides they need some needles. We need our police because you want to shove them down into the county so the IU can't see them. Don't you dare defund our police department. We need more of them or our sheriffs. If that's the way it's going to be in Monroe County, we need more, not less. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowen, for your comments. Next up is Ed Bittner. Oh, Mr. Bittner. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, first off, uh, Marty, I want to see baby before you leave. Uh, so call her back in there. I want to see her. Um, also, um, I'm in, in support of Murrow County Sheriff's Department in all ways. I uh, echo Kathy Abel, Randy Jacobs, Karen Sherfick, and MK in their comments. I... Uh, Fully and wholeheartedly back them. I've seen what they do. If, if any police department needs to be defunded, it's Steinsville's police department, who only gets paid two hundred and fifty dollars a month for the whole force, and they'll give you a speeding ticket for one mile per hour over in a school zone, and there's no school. So it'd be nice if you're going to defund one to have that done. But I fully support our police department. There are great people all of them except for the Steinsville Police Department. And again, Marty, I'd like to see your doggy. So uh, other than that, uh, I am, I'm gracious that, uh, you, that you give us a chance to even speak. So that's all I got, thanks. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Paul Adams. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, this afternoon. And I just want to let you know that the Monroe County Sheriff's Department has my trust and confidence. Uh, I've interacted with them on a number of levels and just really appreciate all the service that they give to our community. Uh, I would say that instead of defunding, we should look at increasing funding for the Monroe County Sheriff's Department. And um, just to give them all our support and appreciation in the work that they do. And I would think that any public servant, elected officials uh, that would not appreciate, not support the funding of the Monroe County Sheriff's Department should not be in office. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is an Amy Kay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. All yes, right. I just wanted to state, uh, my name is Amy Kirby, and uh, as a resident of rural Monroe County, I support fully funding the Monroe County Sheriff's Department and all law, law enforcement for the safety and security and well-being of our community. As the population rises, the law enforcement need should rise as well. So we actually may need more law enforcement. I've always had... Uh, pleasant, respectful encounters with the law enforcement. And I, I, would, I would sure hate to be in an emergency situation, have to call 911 and no one respond. Um, and living in rural Monroe County, it takes a little longer. So having more law enforcement would actually be a better option in my opinion. Um, I thank you for your time and consideration. 
Thank you, and for your comments. And I see that we are approaching uh, 6.30. I want to continue the public comment. I, I don't think we got to public comment until it was about 5.40, so we'll go for about another 14 minutes here. I see we have 20 hands raised for folks to speak. I want everybody to have their voices heard tonight, but as we agreed at the beginning of the meeting, we're gonna take a pause on the public comment beginning at uh, right around 6.40. And we'll get to our uh, regular agenda items at that point. I think we can move through those very quickly. And uh, we'll be right back into public comment at that point. So we'll, we'll move forward with the next speaker. Next up is Kay Neal. Can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Okay. Um, so my name is Kira Neal, and I have lived in Monroe County my whole life. Um, I want to show my full support for the Sheriff's Department and want to thank Mr. Jacobs for his service and all of his colleagues. Um, I think it is absolutely crazy that um, Monroe County is even considering defunding the Sheriff's Department. Um, I agree with everyone who has stated, if anything, we need more. Um, my family is from rural Monroe County, so every time or the times that we've had to have the sheriff's department out there it has taken a little bit but you sit and think what would we do without our sheriff's department you think of the emergency situations where um you have to have um first responders on the scene immediately you think what am i going to do in those situations where i cannot have my sheriff's department who am i going to call what am i going to do all of, all of these people who are saying to defund the police are saying it out of wanting to follow suit, um, wanting to stick with trends. What, what, what are they going to do if they have an emergency and they don't know how to handle it? Everybody calls the police. Everybody calls our first responders. I think having our first responders and our sheriff's department is, is so important. I, I couldn't imagine living in Monroe County or anywhere without law enforcement or sheriffs because you never know how bad things are going to get. I'm, my time's almost up, so I want to thank you for listening, and I hope you take into deep consideration everything that everyone is saying about keeping the Sheriff's Department, keeping everybody safe, and really putting the public first. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Brianna Myers. Hi, my name is Brianna Myers, for the record. When I was 12 years old, my mom physically abused me, and she had called the cops on me a few hours after the incident. I was 12, mind you, again. The police officer threatened to take me to juvie because I was the delinquent. I have not had a good interaction with anyone in the county or the other seven uh, unit like um, organizations that police Monroe County there are eight of them in total so if you're saying that we need more police there are eight of them that police us eight it's not just the sheriff it's not just IUPD it's not just BPD there's five other ones um, I would also like to um, share with you guys the fact that everyone who's speaking sounds very white very rich and um, the racist comment earlier was very uncalled for and unsure why that was allowed. Um, and everyone who says that we need more police as well, obviously you have not done your homework and you need to read up and you need to figure your stuff out. Thank you. That is the end of my time. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Diana Eats. Ms. Eads, you may need to turn on your microphone, turn, unmute your microphone. Hi, my name is Diana Eads. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, well, I have family. And I have a lot of friends that are on the police and the sheriff's department. And to defund, to even think about defunding is, is just totally, totally out of the question. 
we li also live in a rural area of Bloomington. And, you know, I mean, things go on out here too. It doesn't just go on in the city. But I feel that if anybody and everybody cares about their county they live in and the city they live in, they couldn't even consider cutting the pay of our loyal police officers. And, you know, it's just, it's hard for me to believe that this is even a question that has come up. And uh, I'm like some of the others, you know, just, just because another state or another county or somebody is doing this, you know, let's not follow that. Let's keep a peaceful county. Let's keep a protected county. And you cannot do that without our law enforcement, all law enforcement. We appreciate all of them. We love each and every one of them. We pray for them every day to make sure that they're covered and going to be protected. And that's all I have to say. I thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Ms. Eads. Next up is Chris Snell. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I am Deanna Snell. I'm Chris's wife. I am listening right now with my five children, so I will be very brief, but I just wanted to share my support of the Sheriff's Department and to be clear that my family does not support any efforts to defund them. I am thankful for the work they do, working to keep the families in Monroe County safe. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Next up is uh, Brenda. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I just want to voice my support for the Sheriff's Department. And um, the one thing that doesn't seem to have been brought up in any of this tonight is we have a very diverse uh, law enforcement here in town. We have all uh, races and um, all different ethnic backgrounds represented. That's very important to keep the community safe. We also have the, the department goes through so much training on how to deal with mental illness, how to deal with different situations, how to diffuse different situations. Where we're at now is we're looking at what has been going on in downtown Bloomington, in other communities, with the riots, with the destruction. If you defund the sheriff's office, that's what we're going to get in the county. That's what we're going to get throughout the area. When you do that, then you get the people in the county who haven't had any of that training. All we know is we know how to protect ourselves as best we can. It's going to end up with a lot more violence than what we've ever had before. The Sheriff's Department is there to keep things calm and to follow the laws. That's what's most important for all of us. The second point would be is if we have um, a school situation where um, we have to go into a lockdown, the kids are in danger. You need the sheriff's department and every department available to protect those kids. Again, represented by all different ethnic backgrounds is so important for everybody. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. And just as a, a reminder here, we got about five or six more minutes before we move into our uh, the, the rest of our agenda, and then we'll come back to public comment at that point. We'll move on to our next speaker now. Next up is Linda Avenatti. Welcome, Ms. Avenatti. Ms. Avenatti, are you there? Okay, it looks like their mic is not enabled. We can, uh, maybe Ms. Avenatti can join us uh, at, at the end. Uh, once we get through the agenda, we'll move on to the next speaker, please.
Next up is Becca Anderson. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, this is actually Robert Anderson, uh, Becca Anderson's spouse. We're watching together on her phone. Uh, we would just like to call in and say that we fully support the sheriff's office. Uh, I, I can't believe that we're even having to watch and, and wonder what this vote is going to be that it's on the table. It just seems ludicrous to me. Um, and we just wanted to say we support them and let you guys know where the public stands. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up is screen name Miller 264. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, my name's Donna Miller and I work with the Sheriff's Department. I've been there for 31 years. Um, I do have a social work degree, by the way, and um, I can't remember ever being trained um, in anything that our officers have to go to. Um, usually it's a crisis situation and um, I was never trained to do that. I don't know if they do that now, um, but I know that I was never trained to do that. So I can't imagine um, a social worker going into a situation like that. Um, I just wanna support my officers that I work with. Um, I think they're very professional. I, uh, my husband works in the jail. I know that probably 85% to 90% are all felons. They're violent felons. Um, used to back in the day when I first started working, I worked in the jail and it was just little misdemeanor things. Um, Bloomington has changed and it's getting scarier by the minute. And I think if you defund them or us, it would be a very big mistake. Um, I have enough time to retire. so. I'm not talking to try to keep my job because I can go other places and probably be a social worker somewhere. But I like working with the Sheriff's Department. I like what we stand for. I like what we do. And um, so, yeah, I'm just here to support us. And I'm sorry that um, girl had some issues when she was 12, but you can't um, go and, and uh, say that all police officers are bad because they're not. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. We're gonna take two more uh, uh, public comments here and then we're gonna take a pause from public comment. Next up is Barbara Salisbury. Welcome. Hello, I just wanna make um, a couple of comments. First, I wanna say, I'm not sure how you can tell over the phone that somebody's rich or white. Um, the other thing, um, I know a lot of people of color. I know a lot of black people. I know people of ethnic backgrounds. I don't know anyone that supports defunding police or law enforcement. We need law enforcement. We need order in our communities. We cannot have a society, a functioning community without law enforcement. I am a person with a disability. I am blind. I've had to call the police in the past two years at least two, three times as the uh, people have been pushed out of the square of, um, of Bloomington and pushed south. We're having more and more problems down on the south side. And uh, never in my life have I ever had to call the police, but I had someone try to break in my house in broad daylight. I cannot imagine what it would be like not to have law enforcement to depend on, to call when, when, it's, when there's an emergency. This is totally just unbelievable. And these young people that are calling for us to defund police or cut police departments, I can tell you, if someone breaks in or tries to assault them, they'll be calling the police. So please fund our law enforcement, fund them to the greatest point that you can as we face the problems that we face are getting greater. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Salisbury. And this will be our, uh, our last 
uh, public comment for this segment. Once we get through the uh, agenda, we will return to public comment. So I hope everyone will stick with us, maybe take a little break uh, for a bit here uh, and then come back and rejoin us after we get through the remainder of our business. Uh, we'll now move on to our, our final public commenter of, for this segment. Next up is screen name SA. Hi, um, I've lived in Monroe County my entire life, and I've never seen anything like what's going on right now. My daughter went downtown last weekend, last week, um, to the Chocolate Moose, and when she left, she um, saw protesters holding assault rifles and no police anywhere. And I want to know why the mayor didn't allow, that's what I've heard, the mayor didn't allow the police to protect our citizens, and my daughter came home and told me this story. And now we are not letting her go back down there. And I was raised here, and this is not the same city that I grew up in. And to talk about defunding the police um, really um, is ludicrous. I agree. And I also agree with Barbara, who said that you can't tell somebody's race over a phone call, and you can't tell if they're rich. And I'm certainly not rich, but I pay my taxes and I work. And these people who are wanting to defund the police, I'm guessing that they don't work. And I mean, what would what would their motives be to defund the police? I want a safe society and I want my children to live in a safe society that I grew up in. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, we are going to put a pause on public comment for the time being. Uh, we're going to get into our, uh, the rest of our agenda items here. I apologize, I've got to take a five minute break. I've got a very hungry daughter who, need, who needs a piece of pizza heated up for her, and I'm gonna return, uh, I'll be back very shortly, okay? So I'm gonna go off camera here for about four or five minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, well, um, should we proceed while Eric is uh, indisposed? Okay, um, then I will um, move us through the next agenda item, uh, which is department updates. Um, if any, if there's anybody um, on the line in the meeting uh, from any of our county government departments who has an update that they'd like to share, um, something five minutes or less, please. Um, please let your let us know by raising your hand. There do not appear to be any hands raised. Thank you. Okay, with no uh, department updates, we'll go to council liaison updates. Um, are there any updates from my council colleagues on their liaison uh, departments? Council Iverson. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Wiltz. Uh, I have two updates. One is from the health department. Um, I want to thank everyone out there who is wearing your mask when out and about. Uh, this is helping us um, stop the spread of coronavirus uh, 19. Uh, I know that for those of you paying attention, uh, there have been some spikes in our numbers locally, and so we do need to stay vigilant. Uh, please continue to follow the CDC guidelines, which the Mineral County Health Department is following as well. You can follow them on Facebook. You can follow them on their website. Uh, make sure you're social distancing. Make sure you're wearing a mask. Make sure that you're washing your hands regularly. Um, there is uh, currently um, you know, all sorts of things that you can do, but please uh, ask uh, those listening to make sure that you're doing at least those things. Uh, my next update is uh, I wanted to share some information that I had gotten uh, about the Monroe County Collaboration Plan. Uh, Monroe County Collaboration Plan was uh, just released for calendar year 2021. Uh, and I think I I'm not gonna go into detail uh, on this, uh, but I, I do wanna point out as it, as it pertains to the conversation we're having is that 
the following Monroe County departments are in collaboration with each other and talking with each other about ways to make our community better. And that includes the Monroe County Circuit Court, the Court Probation Department, the Prosecuting Attorney, the Public Defender, the Sheriff, the Police and the Police Department, and Parole District 5. These, these organizations are all working together to make sure that our community is safe. And this document, I'll try and make sure that it gets onto our website, the county's website soon, uh, is, is an, an illustrating document that shows how uh, the county is, is working for the, the, the public good. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Iverson. Uh, any other liaison updates? Well, um, I have some. <laughs> So I, I will go. Um, for the Environmental Commission, I uh, wanted to take a, a moment to say that we do have a couple of openings on that commission. It's officially called the Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission um, and would love to have the, some applicants in the pool um, to be able to appoint him in the very near future. So consider doing that. You can find application materials um, on the county government website uh, under boards and commissions. Also, the Environmental Commission is um, pursuing the completion of the Hoosier Resilience Index for Monroe County. Um, and this will be a process where we evaluate um, our readiness um, in terms of resilience to uh, climate change um, and the impacts that it can have on our community. Um, another update I have from Human Resources Department, uh, they're actively evaluating and looking at a variety of training options for county government employees um, as part of just an enhancement of our onboarding and ongoing training for employees. Um, and I was informed that diversity and inclusion training was something that is being looked into. Um, and that is all I know about that. Um, the, the other department that uh, both Councillor Deckard and I are liaisons to is the Sheriff's Department and uh, the jail. And I wanted to share that we have reached out to Sheriff Swain and asked him to sit down with us and uh, share some of his uh, department's um, policies, successes, viewpoints, um, and data so that we can have an informed uh, discussion about what uh, our county's needs are with respect to uh, reform and um, the sheriff's department. So hopefully we'll be hearing from him soon. That's all I have, and Councillor Spoonmore is back. Yes, I am back. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Deckard. Thank you very much. I'll be really, really quick. Um, I met uh, just a couple weeks ago with the clerk to begin uh, to talk about the fall and the election, obviously with COVID-19, that continues to be um, a, a delivery concern on how they do it. And I know they're working uh, very hard with our bipartisan election board on that. Um, we will likely learn more on that as they do. And so more, more to come there, but I just always like to keep that on the radar because that is a massive delivery interaction system. Thank you to Kate also for sharing um, the communication with Sheriff Swain. I know there's ongoing discussions there. Obviously we're hearing from folks uh, that are extremely concerned about safety and the, how safety works in our community. And I think folks have a, every right to be concerned. And that is one thing I have heard everybody agree on is, you know, being safe in the community, all, all folks feeling uh, that they equally have access to that safety. And so I'm hopeful that all of this um, leads to, to, to reassurance and, and good efforts with there. The last thing I just want to say, I always want to plug our Monroe County Women's Commission, which I'm pleased to be the liaison for the council to. The Women's Commission had yet another phenomenal meeting last week. Um, they are working hard on taking what was once girl co Girls Coding Week, where um, young women in the community are exposed to the STEM areas of education or STEM areas, um, areas I str all struggled with when, I, when I was in school, but getting them involved. It was a, a, an event week, but the, the uh, Women's Commission is working on 
partnering with the schools to make that a little bit more accessible and more readily available across the county. And it's an awesome thing. I suspect um, we've got to work out the details, but Nichelle Whitney, our, our dynamic chair, will be coming to council to talk a little bit more about that and do some advocacy for it. This is a huge thing for the women in this county and um, certainly our students. And with that, I'll be quiet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Deckard, for your updates. Uh, are there any further uh, council liaison updates at this point? Okay, seeing none, we will move on uh, to the next item on our agenda, which is um, the tax abatement application. And we're gonna open the public hearing now um, for the tax abatement for Provelli Inc. Very excited about this. Um, I believe our auditor, uh, Kathy Smith, is maybe present here tonight. If she is, let's uh, add her as a presenter just in case there's any information we need regarding remonstrances or objections that she has uh, uh, put together and collected. And I believe Mr. Cockrell is, is here as well too. Correct. Um, I, uh, I spoke with Kathy this afternoon regarding uh, remonstrances, and she said they do not have any regarding Provelli. Very good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, did you have any uh, additional information? Do we have our, uh, do we have uh, representatives Provelli here with us tonight? I believe we, oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Here, give me one moment, please. And to our TSD department, while you're, thanks so much for all the wonderful assistance that uh, you all provide to us. I know this is a lot uh, to, to deal with in these meetings, but uh, for just one person, <laughs> thank you so much. And I see Mr. Worrell, okay. Yes, good evening, counselors. Thank you so much for uh, your time here tonight. Uh, obviously, we're all very excited about the project here. Every, um, every body that we've been in front of has unanimously approved the project. Uh, again, just a brief overview. We're looking at just over $4 million worth of investment inside of Monroe County, north of $2 million in new payroll and 60 net new jobs to the community. So just a tremendous project, uh, especially given the times and some of the difficulties that many other businesses have faced. So uh, again, thank you very much for uh, considering this opportunity for them to continue to invest inside of Monroe County. I, I'm not certain if the Prevelli team was able to make it tonight to the meeting. I know there are obviously other pressing issues that you guys are all uh, reviewing here, but uh, thank you very much for, for your considerations. Thank you. And do we have any, any are there any, uh, any Prevelli representatives that would like to speak? I'm here, Reinhardt Cyphers. Yes, Mr. Cyphers, welcome. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, yeah, thank you very much. We've thoroughly enjoyed getting to know Monroe County. We didn't know much about Monroe County uh, six months ago. And since then, we've learned a ton. We're very, we love the county. We think it's definitely the right place for the home of our business. Uh, the, Everybody we've reached to, some people on this call, and just others throughout the community have been very, very helpful. Um, somebody asked me earlier just to give a quick overview of our company. Uh, we are the company that started in a garage. Uh, our company, the name of it's Prevelian, just for the record, is LLC. And so we bring attention to the curb. And so those are the type of products we manufacture. If you think about it, you drive down the road, you see residential mailboxes, you see DOT traffic signs, you see real estate signs, address markers, things like that. Those are the products we make. They're, you know, they're products that every single person really needs. Um, and Prevelli, what we uh, strive to do is we try, try, we've been looking for a business to acquire that needed to get up with the times. And so we went and we found a business in Bloomington that was founded on Grant Street, right across from the Grant Street end in a garage, uh, and it's called Hall Signs. 
And we found this business and it started there and what they manufacture are DOT traffic signs. And it started there and then it moved to where the Lowe's is now by the interstate. And now it's on West Vernal Pike. And it was started uh, by Wayne and Martha Hall. And the, the really cool thing about this business is we went and toured the business. And whenever we left, we all said, okay, what was the real takeaway from visiting the facility? And we said, you know, we all got around the word care. We said the people in Monroe County care. And we didn't really, we really said it about the business, but now it's even bigger. It's now we're hiring, you know, people in Monroe County. And it is, there's a lot of people that care. They want, they want the businesses in Monroe County to be successful. They want their county to be successful. Uh, we want Monroe County to be successful. Uh, it represents the state of Indiana and ultimately it represents our country that's built on small businesses. And so we just felt like that was the absolute best place for our business to be. And so we've acquired the real estate there. Uh, we've reached out some contractors, we're looking to expand and we are bringing some manufacturing from Georgia to Indiana. In addition, our company grows through acquisitions and we needed a manufacturing hub. And so we are, on, we are out looking for businesses to acquire. Interestingly enough, we've already found just loosely connected with a business in Monroe County and that business needs some energy. It's the same energy that we're providing to Hall Signs and we'll, we'll grow more jobs if we acquire that business and keep jobs in Monroe County. And then also other businesses that we buy outside of Monroe County, we'll bring them into Monroe County and that'll bring more jobs. We've already added jobs uh, since this process started and we continue to work to add jobs. So super excited. Thank you for having me. I know there are a lot of people on this call. So, uh, you know, thank you very much. And we, we really appreciate the consideration. Thank you, sir. Okay. I want to uh, turn to the council now and see if there's any uh, questions or comments regarding uh, the tax abatement. Uh, are there any, by show of hands, you know, See Mr. McKim. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, Reinhardt, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate hearing about the uh, investments you plan, and it sounds like things have even progressed uh, further since uh, since we last met. So that's very exciting to hear, and, and uh, I very much support this. Um, I was wondering if, if Mr. Cock rolls on, can you just take a minute to ex just because there are so many members of the public here, again, many who are not used to coming to these meetings, just to explain the tax abatement process as we've been through it uh, so far, the steps that have already gone through and, and explain where we are in the process. Oh, absolutely. Um, we got at this tax abatement and we uh, had our Economic Development Commission review it um, initially because they are the investigatory body for the for the council uh, they reviewed it they interviewed the the business and then they had a positive recommendation a unanimous recommendation uh, for its approval uh, then it came to the county council last month for an initial review in which uh, the, the company made their, a presentation there were lots of question and answers and and you preliminarily approved uh, this tax abatement, and uh, then we noticed a hearing for tonight, as well as you know, pr provided information for those who are interested. Um, since this is in a tax increment finance district, this also went to our redevelopment commission to determine whether it would have any impact on the the bonding. It also went to the county commissioners for for approval. And they both those bodies approved this uh, unanimously, and so now it's coming back to the uh, county council for uh, final review and, and approval. Um, if you approve it tonight, um, I would just add that what we are looking at is a ten-year tax abatement, where the the taxes are phased in over that ten-year period. Um, and so, I don't know if there's any other questions or or if that covered it. Excellent summary. Thank you. Very helpful. Thank you. And for, uh, for the audience, uh, Mr. Cockrell is a county attorney who works Correct. on lots of these uh, issues for us. Okay. Any further questions or comments from council members? Mr. Decker, did I see your hand earlier? Yes. 
Thank you very much. I just have a just a comment, no question. I just want to thank you for bringing bringing jobs to this community. This is a difficult time, obviously economically, for the nation, for the state. Um, but if you drive around Southern Indiana, particularly, um, you'll see that we have some communities that are suffering. And I can remember, particularly in the '90s, in our community, when there we had job loss and severe struggling, and I always worry that we're on a fine line with that. So we're glad that you're here. Um, I appreciate you taking my questions in the last meeting about community involvement, because we're real um, happy about that too. And I just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Um, keep, make, make our, our people happy, employed, um, do all that you can. And I think this community will give it you everything um, that, that you give it. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. We will do everything we can, uh, you know, to help grow jobs and do everything we said we were going to do. Council Member Hawk. I wanted to say again this evening how much I appreciate you bringing jobs and uh, especially because that's in an area that's uh, we're split up in districts and then some are at large with the county council and that area is in my district and so I know that people look forward to uh, new job growth and of course that job those jobs will be available throughout the county and throughout the region but it will make a huge difference when we bring in new families um, and I'm hoping that they'll have children who will be a part of that Richland Bean Blossom School District because we need that head count and we have a great school system over there as well. So thank you very much for coming to Monroe County. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Very good. Uh, any further comments or questions from Council? No, I'll just say, Reinhardt, thank you so much for the investment in Monroe County. I think that, you know, these are these are exactly the kind of uh, opportunities uh, we want to attract here and, and the types of jobs we want. Uh, and I think you're going to be so proud of uh, the Monroe County residents that are going to fill those jobs and uh, do really great work for you. So thank you so much for, uh, for your willingness to invest here. We've got a great workforce and, uh, and we look forward to all the success uh, that, that uh, you will have. May I make a comment as well? Yes, and Ms. Pearl, welcome. Hi, thank you so much. Um, my name is Jennifer Pearl, and I'm the president of the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with us, we are a nonprofit that uh, su supports the promotion of job creation across Monroe County. And we've been absolutely delighted to work with the Prevelli team since last fall as they began looking at our community. Uh, it's quite clear that they're very invested in the community. Uh, they've even been taking, um, you know, local promotional materials to send them back to the larger Brevelli family um, to help promote what we have here. Um, you know, they're invested not only in the growth of the Hall Signs business uh, through hiring and expansion plans, but had talked about ways in which they look to invest in the community as well. And um, the BDC is here to work with them, not only you know during this stage of the process, but making sure that they can connect with other resources across the community, just as we work with other employers across the community as well. Um, overall, you know this would be good news during regular times, but it's even better news uh, given the economic hit we've taken recently. And we just wanted to say thank you to the council for consideration, and thank you so much to Prevelli for investing in the community here. Thank you. Okay, um, I, at this point, we'll move on to public comment. Or is there any public comment uh, regarding the Prevelli Inc. tax abatement? Do we actually read the motion on the floor yet? Oh, no, I don't, I don't think, think we, we actually did. did. What, where, where is our motion here? Well, this, this first part is just the public hearing, hmm. so it's not really a, a motion. Um, but before we will have a motion um, to approve the resolution, would you like me to just go ahead and, and do that? Well, well, that's where public comment is listed on the, on yeah. the agenda after the, uh, as part of the motion. So and that's, that's the only reason I brought that up. 
I can go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, go ahead and read the okay. motion. Okay. Um, Council, I move to approve resolution 2020-25B, part two, approval of tax abatement for Prevelli uh, LLC. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We've had discussion already. Um, we'll turn now to uh, the public and see if there's any public comment on this item. Uh, there's uh, one hand for Jim Shelton. Great, Mr. Shelton, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Jim Shelton with the Chamber of Commerce and a member of the County RDC. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce certainly urges you to approve this. Uh, it's very exciting, very, not just for the jobs, which are wonderful, but the attitude of this company uh, is wonderful in terms of uh, being interested in supporting the community. We want to salute Jim Pearl and Clark Greiner of the BEDC for working with them and bringing them forward. As uh, Richard Martin said at the end of the uh, RDC meeting, uh, please go keep bringing these in for us. So th this is a wonderful segue from the Hall Sign Company, which has been there forever. And we encourage you to approve this. And we certainly want to say welcome to Monroe County. Thank you. Any further public comment? Okay, and at this point, uh, we will go ahead and do the vote. We'll do a roll call vote. No, no. what we need to do is adjourn the public okay, hearing so we'll portion, and then we should have read the motion for the resolution. Okay, so we will close the public hearing for the tax abatement and that is adjourned now and uh, we've had the motion read do we need to do that again okay no. we can go ahead and vote now okay councillor will yes councillor iverson yes councillor spoonmore yes councillor hawk yes Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, and now we'll, uh, we'll move on to our aviation department. Uh, Council, I move to approve the aviation department's request for an additional appropriation in fund 8101-0000 airport improvement plan in the amount of $69,000 in the services category. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And I know Mr. Laverty, Carlos Laverty is, is here. There we go. Looks like he's now joining. Can you hear me there? Yes, sir. Welcome. Uh, good evening, thank you. Yeah, um, do you have some additional context you'd like to provide on this? Sure. Uh, the Monroe County Airport uh, was uh, approved for a federal CARES Act grant this year. Uh, the grant, which is in the amount of $69,000, is intended to help offset uh, a decline in revenue uh, due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. Uh, the CARES Grant Act will be a uh, direct pay award administered and reimbursed for expenses and any debt services uh, although it's not an airport improvement plan grant, uh, the airport is requesting that the appro an, appropriate, an appropriation line uh, be created in our 8101 airport improvement plan fund uh, because it'll be administered in the same fashion as an AIP grant. Uh, something of note is that this CARES grant will reimburse at 100%. Uh, no local matching funds would be required. Uh, and that is all I have. Thank you for your time and consideration. And if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to help. Great, thank you, Mr. Lavely. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll turn to council now. Are there any questions or comments for, uh, for Mr. Laverty? Seeing none, I have, I have none either. I will, uh, is there any public comment on this item? 
I see no public comment. We'll have a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve an additional appropriation and fund 8101, Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Is not present. Councillor Wilt? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Leaders okay. here now. Okay, we'll move on to our next item. The next item is do, 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 do. number eight. Thank you. Council, I move to approve the sheriff's request for an additional appropriation in fund 1000-0005 general fund sheriff in the amount of $3,750 in the supplies category and an appropriation of $54,258,000 in the services category for a total appropriation of $58,008. Second. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure who our representative from the sheriff's office is. Um, Ms. Rice or Ms. Shell, did we get any confirmation on who would be? It's here? my understanding that it was going to be Sheriff Brad Swain. Okay. He may be listed in the attendees and we'll just need to get him added here. Uh, the name is not listed in the attendee list. Um, it's possible that he uh, signed in under a different screen name though. I, I, I see, see SHB Swain. Swain. Yeah, that may be. That would be it. There we go. There, is that working? Yes, sir, welcome. All sure. right. Yeah, I was feeling, I was waving at my uh, screen to let you know I was here. Uh, we had received a grant through Bureau of Justice for COVID related items uh, that my office might encounter and uh, we were awarded $58,000 I think it's listed as a CARES grant, but uh, this may or may not may or may not be different. You have to excuse me. I just had a filling put in my tooth, so half of my face is numb right now, uh, and uh, so I'm not sure if it's a CARES grant as it's described or not. Uh, but it's through the Bureau of Justice. Uh, several counties of this size were. Uh, uh, notified if they applied, they'd receive this funding. And uh, the uh, intent of using this money is to pay for an ionization system within the uh, ventilation system in the uh, justice building, specifically where it serves the jail to kill viruses. And uh, the other benefit to it is it helps eliminate odors. Uh, we had looked at an uh, ultraviolet system, which is effective, uh, but this cost is the same and uh, it has that additional benefit. Uh, other items we're purchasing are uh, some portable ultraviolet units that we can move into cell blocks or in our multipurpose room. Uh, this grant allows us to spend money throughout the entire justice building. So say there's a courtroom with a jury trial where everyone wants to feel uh, comfortable coming in and serving jury duty in the, in the future that uh, uh, we can use these, these ultraviolet units to sterilize or sanitize a room. Uh, and uh, we anticipate a room, say one of our larger courtrooms, it could be sanitized in about an hour. So even during lunch, <clears throat> juries going into uh, recess or deliberation uh, throughout the, uh, the jail, as we see needs, we can 
sanitize different rooms and then uh, uh, you know in the future we'll just have a healthier work environment uh, that uh, these systems will keep the uh, the jail in a much better uh, condition right now we're still COVID free with inmates and staff and this could only help us uh, so I guess part of the procedure is that uh, we need to have a process for permission to spend this grant money once it arrives. Yeah. Thank you very much for that uh, information, Sheriff Swain. Uh, I'm gonna uh, turn to the council now and see if there's any questions or comments from, uh, from council members for the sheriff, uh, Mr. McKim. Yeah, so first of all, I just wanted to, to confirm what I thought you just said, and that's also what I believe to be true, but that is the Monroe County Correctional Center has not had any known COVID cases yet to date. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, we have a screening process for inmates when they arrive uh, where we check the temperature and ask questions. Uh, and we did have one person who was presented for booking and had a very high temperature. Uh, we asked that the arresting officer take that person to the hospital and whatever their condition was, the hospital advised the police officer they were going to keep that person as a patient. Uh, normally, they just check them out, say they're okay. I mean, if they are okay, then, then they return. But uh, through this screening process, we also kept a uh, uh, sick person who was brought in on a relatively minor situation. Uh, so in addition to standard practices that the jail commanders had, uh, the screening process has also prevented someone from coming in and possibly infecting the jail. Uh, thank you. And then also there's a, uh, there's a statement in your narrative uh, for this uh, agenda item that says, in no event will supplantation take place. And I believe I understand what you're saying there, but I think because it's relevant to a lot of the other discussion we've had about funding the police, um, can you explain what was meant by that statement? Uh, I think that was written up by the legal department or pro put in there so someone could clarify exactly what they meant by that. I'm happy to expand on it. Okay. Well, maybe let me, let me ask the question in a different way. Were any of these items that are being requested for this grant already part of your general fund budget? No. Okay. That, that's what answered. That, that addresses okay. the, the issue. Thank you. Ever Hawk, did you have a question or a comment? Okay, okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, uh, Ms. Wilts and then Mr. Deckard. Uh, yes, first of all, Sheriff, uh, congratulations on the grant. This is, this is good stuff. I'm really pleased that we're going to have some extra protection for the folks in the um, Justice Building. I, we had talked about um, replacing HVAC uh, system for the that building at one point. And um, my understanding is that we weren't doing that um, right away because of um, other reasons, but will this ionization unit, if it's going into and, and integrating with HVAC, is it something that is going to then impact or be affected by uh, replacing the, I think it was the fans that were, that we had talked about needing to, um, to replace and someone else can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm just wondering if there's, um, any concern about that. I've not heard anything like that from David Gardner, the building supervisor, uh, but from the description I have with it, this system could just be uh, removed and then replaced with any updated HVAC. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't anticipate something uh, such as just changing the fans of having any effect on that. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. Mr. Decker. Thank you very much. Um, I, I always am watching grants because I know that um, federal, state grants, you never know when they will come again. I know with this being a CARES grant, this is theoretically a one-time type thing. So, you know, I, I know this is a little bit different, but my question is, 
how, what is a timeline roughly? I know you're dependent on federal money coming, which isn't always tomorrow, but do you know a rough timeline to get all this in place to keep that, that good record we've had, at least in the, the jail system on, on being COVID free? Any the idea? ionization, yeah, the system's being installed today. Uh, the first part of it was, I, I think, uh, with the vendors that we've had, just this author, this notice that we've received the money uh, is good for them. Uh, so, and it's only going to take a couple of days. Uh, the other advantage of the ionization is that the ultraviolet systems require the bulbs to be changed every couple of years at about $500. And this system from a uh, conversation I had today with Mr. Gardner, uh, there's no, really no maintenance that uh, comes up with it every couple of years or so. So uh, it will save money in the few, down the road as well with no need for maintenance. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like Michelle has, a, has uh, something to add. I just wanted to clarify um, Kate Wilkes' questions with regards to the HVAC fans. That was an additional appropriation request from the commissioners that the council approved, um, I want to say, in uh, early June with regards to the fans. So it was a, that was a commissioner's uh, uh, out of the uh, county buildings fund. So has that been done or? That part I don't know. I know that you know they they had quotes and that kind of thing, but I'm not sure where they're at yet in the uh, stages. We'll, okay. we'll check with the commissioner's office okay. and, and get that information. But overall, this is all uh, good news, and um, glad we're we're able to to get this done. And thanks for your leadership on this, Sheriff Swain. Uh, any public comment on this item? Or let me check with council. Is there any any additional questions or comments from council? Any public? comment on this item. Seeing none, uh, we'll do a, a, a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve the additional appropriations and fund 1000-0005. Councilor Hawk. Yes. Councilor Deckard. Yes. Councilor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. And now uh, we'll move on to uh, item nine, which is our last main item here. Or, I'm sorry, is that, yeah, item nine? our prosecutor's office and uh, Ms. Hamlin, I believe Beth Hamlin is here from the prosecutor's office and we will let her just kind of give us a, some information here me? first. Yes, okay. hello Ms. Hamlin. Hello everyone, thanks for hearing me out here. Um, this is a request to appropriate our annual uh, contractual funding that we received from Family Social Service Administration through the state uh, for our adult protective services department. When I submitted the original appropriation request, I had not received the contract yet. And so I submitted the request based on the funding that we received last year. We ended up getting a little bit more funding than we did last year. And they funded us in some different areas uh, a little differently than we were in previous years. Uh, so I adjusted the request, but luckily Kim and Megan had already um, requested an advertising amount that was high enough to incorporate the increase we received. So that's my explanation. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from uh, council for Ms. Hamlin? We need to open with the, with the motion ah, first. Yes, we need a motion. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ms. Hamlin, for the um, explanation on the changes in numbers. And Council, I move to approve the prosecutor's request for additional appropriations in Fund 9112-9621 Adult Protective Services Grant 
in the amount of $253,095.22 in the personnel category, $1,000 in the supplies category, and $18,892.69 for a total appropriation. Do I need to say what category that one goes into? Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing. Services. That's services. 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 Yeah. $18,892.69 in the services category for a total appropriation of $272,987.91. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. Any uh, questions or comments from council on the prosecutor's request? Mr. Decker. Just simul or simultaneous. Similar to what I was mentioning in the last item with the sheriff, if the prosecutor's office gets any indication on future with this grant, how the state's handling this down the road or anything like that, please keep us surprised. Let us know. I know that everybody's looking at budgets long-term and this would be one that um, we would want to know about. I, Absolutely. I, I know that you, you might be guessing on some of that, but if you can let us know. And also um, I appreciate your email earlier today and we'll, we will straighten that out and figure that okay. out. Also, just uh, for your information, um, Prosecutor Oliphant has been appointed as the Indiana Prosecuting Attorney Council representative or uh, chair of the Adult Protective Services oh. Committee. So she will be aware of funding changes pretty early on. So I think that's good. Thank that's you. great. Congratulations to, uh, to our prosecutor on that appointment. That's great. Any further questions or comments? Any public comment on this item? Are there any hands raised? Do we have a hand raised here? There is one hand raised. Uh, uh, Jim Shelton. Okay. Well, I raised my hand on the last item. I don't have anything to say about this one. You missed, <laughs> you missed me. I hope we voted the way. You wanted us to. Uh, yes, you did. I just wanted to okay. say as a CASA who has to think about going into these courtrooms, who's well over 65, and uh, I, I really appreciate y'all doing that. So see, I snuck it in. Thanks. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you. Sorry about that, Jim. I'll do a better job of watching the hands. Um, okay. Looks like uh, there's no further public comment on this item. We'll, we'll do a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve new account lines and additional appropriations and fund 9112. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Wilf? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. <clears throat> okay, Council, I move to approve the prosecutor's request for additional appropriations in Fund 8123-9620 Stop Grant in the amount of $24,983 in the personnel category. Second. Okay. This, this is an extension of our current STOP grant, which funds uh, half of the salary for our uh, sex crime deputy prosecutor and domestic violence deputy prosecutor. Um, what happened is during the, pan the shutdown at the state, they were unable to get the new grants processed in a timely fashion. And so they've just tacked another three months onto our existing contract in the hopes that they'll have the rest of the um, grant process completed in time. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, any questions or comments from council members? Ms. Hamlin. Seeing none, is there any uh, public comment on this item? No public comment. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a roll call vote, please. On the motion to approve the additional appropriations and fund 8123. Councillor Wilt? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. 
Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McKen? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hamlin. Okay, so we're gonna move on to item 10 here, which is uh, minutes, approval of minutes, which usually takes about 30 seconds. So for anybody who is uh, ready to get in line for public comment for our next phase of that, the next segment of public comment, uh, go ahead and start raising your hand and uh, we'll get you uh, in line to, to provide comments. So now we'll move on to item 10, which is approval of minutes. from Council, I move to approve the summary minutes for the May 12th, 2020 regular session and May 26th, 2020 work session as presented. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Are there any uh, questions or comments on the minutes? I read them all very thoroughly. I'm good with them. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. I'm sorry, is there any public comment on the minutes? Uh, the hands raised are the ones that are raising hands for the comments, yeah. the general comment coming up. I'm, I'm guessing nobody has any public comment on the minutes. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and do a roll call vote. On the motion to approve the May 12th, 2020 regular session and May 26th, 2020 work session summary minutes as presented. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wilt? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. So that concludes all of our regular business. Um, we're gonna move now into the next phase of public comment. And uh, we have 139 attendees still in the meeting. So in 12 hands raised right now, 13, 14, uh, 15. So we'll just start with the first in line and, and move forward. Question. Yes, Ms. Hall. Uh, we're taking comments only from people who have not already spoken to this. Exactly, yeah. There, there will not be repeat comments during uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. Okay, um, just as a heads up, I did not uh, get a list of everybody who's spoken um, at the beginning, uh, so I don't know immediately whether or not they have spoken. Um, but the first hand raised is uh, Jim Shelton. Hello, Mr. Shelton. Good evening again. Uh, I'm speaking right now on behalf of CASAs, a court appointed special advocates. As I explained to you, I think last month uh, that we have gotten a dramatic increase in cases brought to the juvenile court system because children have been abused and neglect, neglected. And as a result, we need more volunteers to step forward to serve as CASAs or court appointed special advocates. In response to this new demand, uh, we have scheduled a second summer training session I want to make sure the public knows about it. It's going to start August 3rd. It'll run through the 26th. It'll be on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursday evenings from 5.30 to 8.30. It will be conducted via Zoom. And right after that, you would be sworn in by Judge Galvin, and we've got cases waiting uh, for volunteers to help take care of. Uh, the CASA program and the court system, especially Judge Galvin, are very sensitive to keeping all of our volunteers safe. Many of our CASAs are uh, substantially over 65, as am I. And uh, we are accommodating those via Zoom participation as much as possible in visiting with the children and in participating in the courts. So I invite people who might be interested to go to MonroeCountyCASA.org, click on the volunteer link, they will find information, or they can, or they can call 333-2272 and talk to a staff member who will help them decide if this might fit into something that they would be interested in doing. So thank you for that opportunity to spread the word to people. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Shelton. 
Right, next up is uh, Stephanie Queen. Welcome, Ms. Queen. Can you hear me? Yes, okay, yes. thank you. Thank you so much. First, I'd like to thank all of you for taking our comments. Um, I know this is a big job for every single one of you. I have emailed each and every one of you, and a few of you have gotten back with me, and I appreciate that also. Um, I just wanna go on record that I do not support the defunding of our police officers. Um, our police officers do an outstanding job, the sheriff's department, all the way down to anyone who works actually in the county courthouse. Um, I've, I've been in a domestic situation um, in my early 20s. They came out, took care of the situation, put themselves in harm's way to protect me, um, did an outstanding job. Um, I have an autistic son who um, is very fearful of sounds and different, different things. And because of some of your police, our police officers here in Monroe County, um, who have befriended him and have been kind to him and has shown him um, a lot of care, he is no longer afraid of police officers. He, um, they have taken upon themselves to be kind to him. And as a matter of fact, on his birthdays, some of them had found out that it was his birthday and they drove to his birthday party on their, on their own time. And they didn't have to do that. I'm very proud of our uh, sheriff's department, our police department. They do try hard to um, be active with our community. And I am thankful for that. And, um, and I am not rich. I am nobody here in Monroe County. Um, but I, I, do, I do work here, have worked here for 40 years. I do pay my taxes. And I do want to see our police department continue and grow. Thank you all so much for this evening. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Queen, for your comments. Next up is Christopher Simington. Hello, uh, my name is actually Peter Ruiz, they, them pronouns, and I'm a Brown Monroe County resident who does not feel safe in any interaction with our Sheriff's Department or any of the other law enforcement organizations. Calls for defunding the police also call for allocating necessary funds to social services or organizations which actually serve the individual members of our community. Defunding the police means investing in our homeless, providing access to drug rehabilitation services and mental health services for citizens. Social workers are trained in de-escalation, mental health work, drug rehabilitation, and a variety of other services. It has been proven time and again that law enforcement officers escalate issues more than they de-escalate issues, putting folks in prisons for what would have been a non-violent offense. This puts the burden on our taxpayers. While individual officers might be great people, policing is part of a systemic racist system started with fugitive slave catching that puts black and brown individuals in danger every day. This has been aided in the last four meetings by a multitude of citizens who were the majority in, the in four straight meetings. We told you at the last meeting that we needed to be proactive before something happens in our community. Your stances, on an, uh, your stances and inaction have a galvanized white supremacist to attack a citizen of Bloomington. Our law enforcement did nothing for him in all eight of our law enforcement offices because he is a black citizen and citizens who are black and brown do not get served equally by policing. The time to defund and serve our community is now. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Zachary Michael. Mr. Micker, you may need to unmute your microphone. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, Council Member Zachary Michael, resident of Ellettsville. Uh, you've heard tonight that the few voices that, that spoke at the June 30th meeting, uh, specifically the ones that have called for defunding the sheriff's office, do not represent the majority of the population of Monroe County. I implore you to listen to the comments made here tonight. 
The majority of the population in Monroe County does not support any form of defunding of the Sheriff's Office. I challenge each of you to learn more about how the Sheriff's Office works, what they deal with on a daily basis, and what their needs are. If you're up to the challenge, go on a ride along. See it firsthand. That challenge extends to those members of the public that are calling for defunding as well. How could you possibly pretend to know so much about how the Sheriff's Office works, or any law enforcement agency for that matter, without that firsthand knowledge? I notice many don't even have a basic understanding about jurisdiction and areas of right responsibility. How do I trust your ideas and opinions if you don't have this basic knowledge? I've also heard a lot about national studies and national data. What about local data? What does the local data show concerning the issues at hand? Does the data show use of force being disproportionately used against a certain subset of individuals? I'm not negating the importance of data from other areas, but we cannot ignore local data. How do we make decisions about local issues without analyzing local data? Finally, something many of you probably haven't considered, your decisions and your support will have a significant impact on the recruitment for law enforcement in this community. I have no doubt that our community will never entirely defund the Sheriff's Office, but if you support any form of partial defunding or otherwise don't publicly support the Sheriff's Office, the Sheriff's Office isn't going to attract qualified candidates for open positions. The operative word there is qualified. You'll still have candidates, but they won't be near the quality our community deserves or needs. Who wants to work for a community whose leaders don't support them, especially in a job as stressful and dangerous as law enforcement? Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is uh, Linda Avenetti. Hello, Ms. Avenetti. Okay. Ms. Avenetti, can you hear us? Seems that we're having uh, difficulties with uh, Ms. Avenetti. The microphone. Yeah, it looks like their microphone is not enabled. Ms. Avenetti, can you enable your microphone? Avenetti, sorry. Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna move on for the sake of time, uh, so that we can hear everyone. We'll move on to the next uh, commenter. And Ms. Avenetti, please uh, feel free to get on the uh, Monroe County Council website and uh, email your comments to us. We we very much want to hear your input. Next up is Ryan Davis. Hello, Mr. Davis. Welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, with the given time, I can't possibly highlight all the accomplishments that the local sheriff's department has done, but a few to bring to your attention since 2015. The sheriff's office increasing partnerships with the county schools, the community engagements, establishing a social media presence, most notably policy revisions that modernize to reflect best practice as well as the Presidential Task Force on 21st Century Policing. Also worth noting is the national rec recognition that the Sheriff's Office has received for wellness programs and sa safety initiatives. Additionally, the implementation of body-worn cameras being mandated for all of patrol, being the first in the county to do that and issue individual cameras for every officer. Instead of defunding, I challenge you, the council, to defend the sheriff's office. Imagine what they could do when adequately staffed and funded. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is uh, Matt Hawkins. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Welcome. 
Okay. Sorry, I went for a run. <laughs> Didn't know when I was going to call them on. You have two minutes. But uh, I basically wanted to support, uh, voice my support for the sheriff's office. Um, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I wanted to voice my support for the sheriff's department um, and echo a lot of the comments previously. Um, you know, I think uh, my wife's 38 weeks pregnant. I can't, it's, it's just really hard for me to fathom or imagine bringing a child into the world and not having our, our local law enforcement. Again, I live in an area where I'm not going to be serviced by IUPD or uh, BPD. I also think uh, looking at data around local law enforcement and, uh, you know, looking at additional training on de-escalation, diversity, and inclusion, what have you, um, would be good potential solutions. But it's just really hard for me to imagine not having, not having the sheriff's department. So with that, I'll yield my time. Thanks. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Shelby Jade Hoshaw. Welcome. Hello. Uh, so I'm gonna speak quickly because I have a few topics to cover. Um, first, I'm hoping that the council could provide an update on the suggestion from the June 30th meeting to provide the public with more accessible budgetary information so that our average citizen can understand the budget and provide the recommendations for these upcoming budgetary discussions. Second, I wanna urge the county council members to take uh, the anti-racism policy training being offered by Black Lives Matter Bloomington. I would like for you to make it a priority to make room in the budget for this. And additionally, for all of our community members speaking out today in support of the Sheriff's Department, I'm concerned, all, like you all haven't been engaged in the last month and a half where a lot of people have shared their negative experiences with the Sheriff's Department, myself included, both personally and professionally. I would encourage you all to attend this training or access anti-racist resources on BLM's website because it is clear that you are not educated about this topic. Also, someone mentioned that we could defund the Sheriff's Department, but at what cost? And I just want to state that the, like, the cost of continuing the status quo as it is right now is the murder of black and brown citizens. And I just want you to ask if that's okay if, for you. And finally, I'm concerned by recent comments from some county council members on Facebook. Marty Hawk referenced the last county council meeting on June 30th as a quote, terrible meeting. And additionally, Marty shared a photo that said, Lord, please give me the patience because if you give me strength, I will need bail money too. And in comments on that post specifically referenced the county council meeting and that her patience is being tested. Marty, but you are an elected official. Why did you run for office? This behavior is unbecoming of an elected official. What do you need bail money for? I'm just confused how an elected official can say that a session focused specifically on gathering public comment was quote unquote terrible. And you've also made concerning comments about protesters and made calls for law and order. And I just want you to clarify maybe for the public record what you mean by these comments and how law and order approach handles the protests in Bloomington. And for other counselors, I wanna say is this behavior that you want Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. And we'll move on to the next speaker, please. Next up is uh, Sean S. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, so I'd like to take an opportunity first to, to thank Councilwoman Hawk uh, and, and Officer Ryan Davis for their transparency uh, and bringing this meeting to the public's attention so that we have an opportunity to, to have our voices heard as well. Uh, and I want you to take note that the tide has turned from the previous meetings uh, and that the vast majority of the comments this evening have been in support of the Sheriff's Department. I want to make clear that I, I believe that reform is warranted. Uh, for reform, we need a budget increase because such reform would require resources and training for these officers. Defunding the police is a horrible idea for multiple reasons, uh, notably that officers uphold the Constitution for everyone rather than one group uh, with a particular ideology or agenda. Defunding the police who protect the very people protesting in the streets today uh, uh, 
for, for this cause is counterproductive because those same police officers prevent people with a real capacity uh, for violence from reacting to these protests. And I just want to point out to the council uh, that once upon a time, Thomas Jefferson said that the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Defunding our local police department is going to shake that tree, I promise. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is screen name IS1 at IU.edu. Hi, Alana Stonebreaker, um, um, Bloomington resident. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, I just want to, um, I apologize, I was a little late for this, but um, thank you for your time on this beautiful Bloomington evening. Um, I'm interested specifically in a follow-up to the town hall. Specifically, there was talk about um, some response from the council um, towards those needs. And uh, maybe it was earlier in this meeting and I didn't hear it, but I haven't heard much of a, of a response from the county council about taking those um, the comments into effect. I heard at the meeting a lot about taking notes, um, which I see reflected in the minutes, but I don't see a lot of response from the council themselves. So um, I'm hoping that we can get that perhaps in further council meetings. Um, I'm also specifically interested in the training um, as well from BLM, hoping that all of the council members would take them up. Um, I, take, I take some offense. I, I support defunding the police. Um, and an earlier uh, person uh, suggested that those who, uh, who speak on this issue do not know anything about county government or county budgets. I am a former Topeka County Councilor myself. Um, and I have been multiple times to that jail. I've, I've done ride-alongs. I've done all those things. And I do support defunding. And I do think that it is possible and pragmatic. Um, I also just wanted to specifically um, focus on the issue of success. And while I do think that we have a great sheriff's office here, it's clearly not enough. Um, and it's clearly, um, so whatever it is, it's Possibly enough. So um, I just want to close on a, a sub quote from my uh, colleague Vanessa Pacheco over um, in West Lafayette, who said, "We can't possibly know if we've done too much to protect Black lives, um, but we will know body by body if we did not know enough." Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next up is screen name Kate. Okay. Okay, can you state your name for the record, please? You may need to enable your mic if it's not. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Uh, uh, Next commenter uh, in line. Next up is Malia Stewart. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, thank you for taking my comment. I am um, a researcher at IU and I think data is one of the most important things in order to make decisions. And as was made clear at the last meeting about this topic, um, the Monroe County Sheriff's Department does not have a transparent data system and um, requests for data from the Sheriff's Department have been ignored by um, Immig Immigrant Justice Reform Commission. Um, a friend of mine on that has, uh, has been stonewalled by the Sheriff's Department for that. So I think that the comment made by the earlier um, member of the public about needing local data is right on. And um, unfortunately, we don't have that data. So until that data is available, I can't say that I think the sheriff's department is uh, doing anything differently than what I hear anecdotally from folks in this community who do not feel supported by them. Um, in the previous meeting, someone with direct experience in the sheriff's department said that 
trainings on bias were uh, met with ridicule from sheriff's deputies. And so I don't believe that just providing additional training is the answer. Um, I do anti-racist policy training as I think that will help the county council, but I, I don't think the sheriff's office is in a position to be changed from within. I think that the community needs to be heard on this and um, we won't be silenced. So I support defunding the sheriff's department. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next up is screen name Libby. Hello. Hello. Libby, could you state your name for the record? My name is Olivia Ball. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I stand in favor of defunding the police for all of the reasons that myself and other speakers have brought up in previous meetings and reallocating funding to social services. I want to say that it's interesting how many people who spoke in favor of funding the police were the biased opinions of retired officers or personal friends and family of officers. There was a comment made by someone earlier who had a difficult time fathoming what a person like me does with their time because we couldn't possibly be decent, hardworking citizens. I work a full-time job and a part-time job and I guarantee I pay more taxes than she does. While I'm on the subject of police, why aren't they required to wear masks when interacting with the public right now? I witnessed a random act of vandalism recently and only one out of the four or five officers that showed up wore a mask or respected a social distance while interviewing me. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next up is screen name OS Walt J. Welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Jessica Oswald, and I just wanted to come on here and show my support um, for our local law enforcement agencies. Um, so much of what's being requested right now, most of our agencies or some of our agencies are already doing. Um, a lot of the change that I hear a lot of people asking for isn't going to be brought by defunding the police. It's going to be brought by changing legislation um, and other avenues. Um, I also feel like we need to focus a lot of our efforts in strengthening our community where we are struggling. Uh, that doesn't include defunding our law enforcement officers. I also urge members of the community to speak with deputies and get to know them personally because they are also part of our community and the community that they serve. I also think it's important to know what we're wanting to expect from our law enforcement agencies. They wear a lot of hats right now. They're doing a lot of different things. And I feel like by defunding and what most people are asking, it's taking away resources from the people that need them. A lot of the calls that law enforcement officers are going to aren't this extreme version of what most people see and think. There's a lot of people who actually need help and our law enforcement officers and first responders are there to support them and guide them in the direction that they need. Um, I also hear a lot of people talking about the trainings, which is really important when talking about our law enforcement officers, but def defunding them isn't gonna help that it's not, they're not gonna have the funds to get the training that they need. Um, again, I support our law enforcement and thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Rebecca Fosman. Hi, everyone can hear me okay? Yes. Hello, um, so prior to the June 30th meeting, I sent um, everyone on the council a reading list <laughs> and then later a podcast as I was sending it I felt like I was turning into my mom but I just wanted you guys to know that there's a lot of information out there about um, different models of uh, whatever word you want to use defunding restructuring take your pick um, but for tonight I wanted to focus on um, an experience that I had with multiple 
um, law enforcement agencies in town, um, by and large, they were great. However, I am in favor of defunding them because um, they all expressed their frustration and I echoed that with, so I had, without going too much into it, an experience with someone um, in town who had stalked me and other women as well. Every single officer, every single person I dealt with at the courthouse, including the county prosecutor that I had, including my victim's advocate, including the people at the Protective Order Assistance Project who were wonderful, every single person wished that there was another option than the only one that we had. And so I think one of the things that we're talking about is expanding options for how to deal, how we think about crime, how we think about justice, how we think about punishing people, right? Um, the person, like there, there's no, um, there's clearly a need for stronger um, mental health resources, social services, and I think this is a very important part of this conversation that the police, again, from my perspective, from my experience, are, are for. They were, they bemoaned the lack of options as well. And so um, I just want to say, let's restructure. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Dylan F. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you state your name for the record? Please. My name is my name is Dylan Friend. I am a sheriff's deputy with Monroe County. I have been in the department for seven and a half years. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say that it is an honor and a privilege to serve all citizens of Monroe County. I want to thank all the people today that have come out to support us. I also want to thank the people that have spoke against us. This is their First Amendment right. It's always nice to hear other sides of the story. Thank you for the county council for taking time out of your evening uh, to hear us, hear our voice. And uh, I ask for your support going forward. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Jerry. Uh, Jerry, could you please state your name for the, for the record? Uh, Jerry Smith. Welcome. Um, I, I've sent an email to all of you guys and I did get a response. Um, I'm not for defunding the, the police department because, you know, I have kids and grandkids that live in Monroe County. And, you know, I'm one of those that I really think their safety, you know, you defund the people that are uh, protecting them. And then you're just letting the people that are running amok just take over. So I'm not for that. So I'm going to yield the rest of this, but I'm not for defunding the police. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Ed B. Hello. Yes. You Thank you guys for Please state your uh, name Ed, for the record, sir. I apologize. Ed Bolin. Okay, thank you. I, I'm born and raised here, native. Uh, been here and I've observed a lot of changes. Uh, training, I'm going to jump on that right away. I've been associated with law enforcement for many years. I work with these guys, all the agencies, and training has evolved over the years. We used to not get trained in schizophrenia or autism or uh, OWI. Uh, we never went through that type of training. We do now. Now there's some training we'd like to continue, but we don't have the funding. Uh, recently, I got to see these guys go through active shooter. Active shooter is they're just what it sounds. There's an active shooter. There's a threat. They go in on duty, off duty. All off duty officers carry their equipment when they're off duty. They're on duty 24 seven. They respond to the schools, the courthouse justice building, businesses, wherever they're needed, they go, no questions asked, they go in there. Poor choices reflect on all of us. Poor choices have been made by doctors, teachers, scout leaders, politicians, coaches, professors, 
just because there's a bad negative interaction or they made a bad choice, not all those people that I just mentioned, those professions, they're not all guilty. Some firefighters in the past have been guilty of arson. Well, we don't go and defund the fire departments just because one or two firefighters have been guilty of making a poor choice. What I'm asking for is who's going to answer the phone at two o'clock in the morning when you got a domestic on 446 and an officer is up on Burma Road. I don't see a social worker intervening. Thank you, sir. Your time had expired there, uh, but thank you for your comments. Next up is Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Could you please state your name for the public record, please? You may need to un unmute your microphone. Okay, it looks like Rebecca is having some technical difficulties there. If she can get those figured out, maybe be able to hear hear more from Rebecca uh, in a Hello? bit. Oh, there we go. Hello. Yes. Well, oh, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just give me one second. I am. Oh, I need to restate my name. I'd be Rebecca Smith. Uh, I am for defunding the police, though I do believe the term defunding the police is a harsh phrase. Um, and it is a bit misleading. Uh, as a personnel in the education department, uh, I don't think we've had a lot of voices on that end. Uh, many of my behavioral issues from students are unfortunately tied closely to the students with either IEPs, mental disabilities, 504s, et cetera. Uh, years later, I've seen many of those students struggling in and out of prison. And you may, you all might try to stop me, your listeners might try to stop me here and say uh, drugs or a bad home life, which uh, can take effect and does in, in some cases. But regardless, there is an obvious trend between students with disabilities and those low education adults. Now, what I would be for is redistributing the funding from police to areas where certified, trained, and capable uh, adults for dealing with those adults with disabilities, and it would be beneficial for reducing the number of inmates with disabilities. Furthermore, it would reduce those numbers of uh, suspects, though I would prefer to call them victims in this case, due to less charges of, quote, resisting arrest, because those victims are incapable, incapable of understanding the scale of danger or severity. This is not about taking away money from those meant to protect us. The change in funding is to help those who are certified to assist those who do not understand social cues and societal norms. Thank you. And put more funding towards public schools, education, counseling, and mental health care. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith, for your comments. Next up is Screen Name K. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, could you please state your name for the public record? Yes, my name is Cassie Brown. Thank you, welcome. Hi, I, uh, I wanted to join this meeting because I think it's conducted with the hope that it will be a source to hear voices of the people and not only the people, but re relay the opinion of the voices of the majority of the people to make decisions. Um, I've heard a lot of support from the Mo Monroe County Sheriff's Department. I, too, am in great support of them. I think defunding is a disservice to the community. Um, and I think, I think that, you know, if you look nationally, New York City crime rate went up 300 percent. Chicago, Baltimore, they've all seen a dramatic increase of crime and uh, community violence. Um, I also wanted to say that defunding highlights an emotional response versus a reactive response. And it's a, it seems like a quick stab at a, at a resolution, but it's based on, a, on an emotional decision. So I think that we need to have more studies and show more support for our Monroe County Sheriff's Department and police nationwide 
to address um, what's been called systemic racism. Uh, I think one commenter mentioned that um, police was born out of systemic racism and uh, that was the foundation of police, but in fact, it was born out of a need for a social response based in a human cry, which led to other things such as the broken window theory. And so that theory addresses that if you don't take care of small things, they will become bigger things, which is in fact what New York City had done um, years ago. I know that my time is coming to an end, but I am really glad that I was able to listen to the people and just hear the fact that there is a lot of support for the Monroe County Sheriff's Department and the deputies that serve the community. So thank you. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to the council people and especially uh, Mr. Spoonmore and uh, uh, Miss um, Marty Hawk. Okay, thank you for your comments. Next up uh, is Linda. Hello, are you there? Yes. I'm Welcome. sorry. <laughs> Linda, uh, Linda could, you, could you please state your name for the record? This is Linda Avenetti. I've had some technology. Okay, yes, yes. Thanks for joining us. Um, my husband and son uh, presently live in Monroe County, and we do support the law enforcement. In fact, I think we need more officers. Uh, and I want to take this time to thank them for their service. I've been a school counselor for over 25 years. I've been a teacher, and I've worked as a mental health therapist. So I've got a lot of background in working with kids and teens and young adults. Um, I've had the good luck to have the opportunity to work with uh, law enforcement, whether it be city, county, or the state. We've worked on cases of child abuse, sexual abuse, violent teens and the homeless, and they've always showed compassion and kindness to our students. I've seen some students at school have weapons some of those students have indicated to me that uh, they plan to do violence. If not for our resource officers, that would have happened. So I'm very grateful that we do have law enforcement at schools and our surrounding communities. We've recently moved to Monroe County. And <clears throat> honestly, if we knew the topic of defunding the police was happening in Monroe County, we would have thought twice about moving here. So please don't scare away good people. Um, with this talk of defunding the police. Um, in all my years, I've seen um, many teens and young adults and even uh, uh, regular adults see life through their emotions and it's not reality. Defund the police and uh, maybe they haven't had good experiences, I don't know, but um, I, I can just say what I have and I, I really encourage everyone to support our police. Okay. Thank you uh, for your comments. And last up, we have uh, Shelly or Bruce. Okay, I think, am I on? <laughs> yes. Hello? Okay. Uh, Sheila Bruce. I'm just calling uh, really to throw my support um, for our law enforcement, our sheriff's department locally. Um, uh, one of your uh, listeners or callers mentioned that most people who have called in to support uh, the police and the law enforcement locally are only because um, they know them or they're related to them or what have you and uh, isn't isn't that the people you, that you want to hear from, the people that know their character and know who they are and deal with them on a daily basis and see their integrity and see how they interact with their families? I think that uh, those are the people that, people that you want to hear from when you talk about the character and integrity of our local law enforcement officers. I've had the privilege to know many of them, and um, I've had great uh, interaction with uh, most of them. Are there bad ones? Absolutely. And there will always be. And those are the ones we need to focus on. But uh, to, to defund a department wholly uh, is, is not the answer. I, I worry about the uh, domestic uh, violence issue when you're sending out a social worker. It's, uh, th those situations are 
highly volatile. And then when you send someone in, now are we putting someone else at risk um, that is maybe not trained to handle that type of volatility? I think it's, uh, I think we need to really be careful about what we're asking for because we may just get it. So I appreciate the council's, um, uh, the opportunity to come on and talk to all of you and thank you for your work. Thank you, Ms. Bruce. Uh, next up is Amelia Schroyer. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I would just like to echo the sentiment of those in favor of reallocating uh, funding um, from the police to organizations like mental health services, homeless sh shelters, um, education, uh, and drug rehabilitation centers in the community. Um, I really believe this will help in reducing the need for over-policing and will actually reduce crime. Um, the fact that we have put police in the position to wear so many hats uh, speaks directly to the fact that we have not allocated proper funds to these other organizations. Um, and I would just like to support everyone else in um, saying to take on the training outlined uh, from Black Lives Matter Bloomington um, and to thank you for letting me speak today. Thank you for your comments. Next up is Mark and Diana. Welcome, Mark and Diana. Hi, this is Diana Boyke. Boyke, welcome. Thank you for your time and careful consideration of not defunding our local law enforcement. I agree with all those that shared their thoughts on the importance to maintain their officials and departments. Jana, we can and should help each other within the parks, schools, and neighborhoods. Helping each other can and should be done. While I too am grieved by the injustices going on around the world and in our own town, we cannot take the place of judge or juror for all the criminal acts upon every law enforcement officer. We need to support our law enforcement officers. We need to support each other. We are putting ourselves at risk by even talking about defunding those who have sworn to take care of us. Yes, they, just like us, make mistakes, but they do take care of us, and they are there when we need them, when they're able. We are here for each other when we can, right? We can the door that's open, the garage door. Wouldn't you let them know? We, ha we are supposed to take care of each other. We need to support our police officers as well so that they can take care of us. Please support our fellow officers. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next up is Samantha. Welcome, Samantha. May need to activate your microphone. There, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, my name is Samantha and I am um, from Monroe County. Um, and I would like to speak um, more about helping and funding our local sheriff's department. 
Um, we have an amazing group of deputies, detectives, and office personnel who are very compassionate, comparing, caring, and very well-trained professionals. Uh, the thought that people in our community are calling for defunding is completely ludicrous. Um, I can't understand how such a small group calling for this has gained so much attention through some of our county uh, council members. If nothing else, they need more funding and more deputies to handle our ever-growing population. Our county is no longer the small town in which I grew up. For those who are calling for the defunding, perhaps you guys can do ride-alongs and see for yourselves what our deputies go through on various shifts from one call to the next. I also know that Black Lives Matter group has met with the Sheriff's Department about their list of demands um, that they would like to see, which is noted as the eight cannot wait, which the Monroe County Sheriff's Office is already meeting each one of those points. So, and also for relocate, um, asking for reallocating funds to social services. I know we've been doing this for quite some time. Um, being from this county, I've seen those being raised and um, seen them grow. But taking money from our sheriff's department is definitely um, something that we should not consider, um, especially as our community is growing. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next up is uh, Tammy Wertner. Welcome. May need to uh, unmute your microphone to speak so that we can hear you. There you go. Okay. Ms. Widener, can you hear us? We unfortunately cannot hear you right now. Um, we'll, uh, for the sake of time, we'll move on to the next commenter. Next up is screen name Moto G7. Welcome, and could you please state your name for the record, please? Yes, uh, David Silvernail. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure how the uh, policy of the BLM would uh, help the uh, police department when you go to their website and it talks about getting rid of the police department, getting rid of prisons, and uh, reparations for prostitutes. Yes, reparations for prostitutes. It's on their website. Um, you know, you look at, if you were to defund our military, you would have other countries attack us. If you don't defund our police, you're going to have criminals prevail. Um, you know, when I was a kid, the police came to our school and brought a lot of motivation in and, and that's why I went into the military myself. Um, never became a police officer, but I do support them and our Sheriff's Department is, you know, different than city police and on many levels, the way they recruit. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I just can't see how the funding the police would work. I mean, you, you have a social worker go out and people who do not like the police already is going to look at a social worker like, hey, you're not a cop. Uh, what, I don't need to listen to you, you know? So I just see it escalating more problems, creating more crime. We have a lot of people moving here from uh, bigger cities. And uh, I, I see that we, need, we need our, that we need our police. I yield my time, thanks. Thank you, sir, for your comments. Next up is Kimberly Hunt.
Hello, Ms. Hahn. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you so much. This topic of defunding um, and the callers that are calling in in support of defunding law enforcement is so upsetting. I just can't imagine what the victims of crimes are thinking listening to this. It's an insult. The caller Smith who called in and said that the um, suspects should be called victims. How dare, how dare. I mean, it's a slap in the face to people that have suffered this and the officers that have stood by the people that have suffered violent crimes. It is such an insult. It is shameful to even think about how dare this topic even be brought up. How dare you insult the people, the families of people that have been murdered while the officers stood by and supported the families and supported the victims with kindness and compassion. They put their lives on the line. They don't do it for whatever these, I don't know what they think they're doing it for. They're doing it out of selfish reasons. They care about people. They care, that's why they're there. That's why they took the job for no other reason because they care. And I beg you, I beg you to not defund and to only support our brave, brave officers. And I yield my time and I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hahn, for your comments. Just to reiterate, we're not taking repeat comments tonight. Um. All right, next up is M. Buchanan. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi. Um, my name is Michael Buchanan, and uh, I would just like to uh, state that as a uh, citizen of uh, Monroe County, I've lived here uh, since 1992, um, moved away from school, came back. Uh, I've seen Monroe County go from a very small community to what it is today, the uh, beautiful, large community. Um, I work in an industry where we are drawing a lot of attention from other states and recruiting individuals to our community. Um, defunding our police, I feel will have a negative impact on that, um, where I support our law enforcement and also hope that you will greatly consider not defunding them um, and utilizing more of our uh, financial benefits that we have uh, locally to add additional support to our law enforcement. Um, and uh, just thank you again for your time. Thank you for uh, staying online for as long as you have. Um, and uh, have a great evening. Thank you, sir, for your comments. And uh, that will conclude. I don't see any further public comment. That will conclude the public comment section uh, segment of the uh, meeting tonight. And now we will move on to uh, council comments before uh, adjourning. Does any members of council have uh, comments that they'd like to make at this time? I saw Mr. McKim's hand first, then Mr. Iverson, and then Ms. Hawk. Jeff, your microphone's off. Sorry, my uh, earbuds battery died, so I had to switch audio. Uh, do you hear me now? Yes. The, on Monday, we'll be cutting the ribbon uh, on the Stride Center, a community-led partnership between the county, the city, Centerstone, Community Foundation, IU Health, Bloomington Health Foundation, Cook, and many others to further our efforts to partner with law enforcement to divert people from jail and provide opportunities to forge connections for those experiencing mental health and addictions crises. There will be opportunities in the future for virtual tours as well as socially distanced tours. But the important thing is to think of the Stride Center not so much as a place, but as a model for community engagement, including law enforcement around treating mental health and addictions. But as we talk about rethinking policing, we need to consider this as an opportunity to create additional strategic community partnerships, to develop and fund new services with organizations like Centerstone, to engage law enforcement in effective partnerships that benefit the community and that will help provide additional support that makes the work of law enforcement less potentially or confrontational and makes serious progress towards justice and equity in Monroe County. 
we can build on what we're already doing well. Many speakers in tonight's public comment called for additional social services resources and additional mental health services. And I agree wholeheartedly. And here we have a framework that we can build on. Yes, it will cost us real money and real resources and require us to move beyond where we might be comfortable, but the results will be worth it and has to be a budgetary priority for us. So I would expect extensive discussions, hopefully in the very near future with Center Stone and with uh, and with related to other opportunities to to invest in social services and uh, and mental health and addictions resources. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKim. Uh, Mr. Iverson. Yes, I want to thank everybody for being so patient. I, I'm very excited to see so much civic participation happening. Um, by my count, we just uh, heard uh, 62. Uh, people publicly commenting. So I wanted to thank the members of the public for showing up tonight and commenting. The reason I wanted to speak tonight was because this is the first opportunity the County Council has met since the July 4th weekend in which there was the allegation of a lynching or attempted lynching. And I wanted to take this opportunity in front of the public to say that lynching or the threat of lynching has no place in our community. What we saw was truly uh, terrific, horrifying and, and, and terrifying. Um, and, and I just want to take this opportunity to say that uh, my hope is that this will uh, not happen again. I do want to point out that our prosecutor has released a statement as of uh, July the 6th, uh, July the 9th, excuse me, and that, of course, there's ongoing um, investigations going on. I thank the public for being in touch with us about this issue. And uh, I urge you to stay in touch with us uh, as this investigation goes forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Hawk, and then Ms. Wilkes, and then Mr. Decker. Um, whoops, I still, can you hear me? Yes. Um, and first of all, I wanted to say how much I appreciate um, the people calling in to comment this evening uh, in the polite and respectful way that they wanted to have their voices heard. And that is much appreciated. It was not um, uh, as confrontational as sometimes we have had in the past. Um, I wanted to make that clear. I also wanted to make sure that people know it's not just the 60 some people that called in but the hundreds and hundreds of emails that we have received. I, I know that I've tried to answer as many as I possibly could, and I continue to try, uh, but I'm not sure I can ever get to all of them. Um, but then uh, just because it was mentioned just here a minute ago about our prosecutor, I just would, my only comment has been from the beginning that the prosecutor will take all the evidence provided and that she gathers and follow that evidence wherever it goes. And let's give that prosecutor uh, the opportunity and the time to get through all of the evidence and she'll take it wherever it goes. That's what, that's how, that's what law and order is about. That's why we have the system that's set up. It shouldn't be a part of uh, the public demanding the prosecutor do one thing or the other because she's elected to do that and she knows her job. So we'll get through it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hawk. Uh, Ms. Wilkes. <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you. Um, I first wanted to, uh, to say thanks for to everybody who has uh, come out tonight to participate and um, echo what uh, Councillor McKim and Councillor Iverson have said with respect to um, recent events and upcoming uh, exciting events, opening the Stride Center, which I think is a really important step um, for our community. You know, we held a meeting uh, a few weeks ago with the hope that we would be able to get citizens input on the future of our county's law enforcement and policy and practice. And we invited all community members. We invited ca other county elected officials. And I was hopeful that we would find actionable ideas um, that then county leadership, whether it's council or commissioners could 
use over the coming months to shape how our justice, justice system operates. Um, and we heard a lot of things that I think um, can be translated into improvements and reform. Um, at that meeting though, we heard little to no support for our current system of law enforcement. However, in the weeks since that meeting, I've received hundreds of emails um, asking that the county council not defund the sheriff's office. And I just wanted to be really clear, there is no vote scheduled on this topic. Um, we are always interested in hearing what the public wants for and from its government. And that's, that's our job. Um, so, so I guess my, my, uh, my point really is that, you know, we are, we are wanting to make improvements. There's, there are always ways to improve how we do things across all sectors. And this, this is the, um, the time, uh, past time to be looking at our local law enforcement and how we can improve that. We've done a lot um, with our partners um, around our criminal justice system already with the problem solving courts and the pretrial diversion programs and Stride Center. Um, but these target people after they enter the system. And what we need to do now is work toward reframing how the system looks and operates in the field, where we interact with people who need services and support as opposed to armed response. That doesn't mean defunding entirely. That doesn't mean abolishing, in my opinion. Um, I think we can do a lot of things um, in county government to affect change in a meaningful way. We can hire an information specialist for the county to make our data more uh, available to the public. Uh, use an online portal, social media, departmental websites. I really feel like that would be an incredible first step. I think we should look at the establishment of an oversight board uh, made up of community members. And um, this would not be replacing the, the merit board um, that exists already, but as a separate entity reviewing for reviewing policy and suggesting changes um, and investigating complaints and grievances, both internal and external to the sheriff's office. Um, I think that we really need to work hard to establish a culture of anti-racism across county government. Um, I think education and training of, of us is part of that. I think we need to focus on improved practice and I think we need to declare racism um, the public health crisis that it is. Um, I think we need in government either um, with an ordin ordinance of some sort with the board of uh, commissioners or on our council, uh, we need to commit to identifying and addressing policies and power structures that are working in favor of white people and creating barriers for black indigenous and people of color. None of these uh, suggestions necessarily dismantles our sheriff's department. They don't defund law enforcement in and of themselves, but they're, primary, they're preliminary steps that are going to build the foundation for further change. And we need to be inclusive about it and we need to hear from our deputies, we need to hear from our citizens, we need to hear from our community leaders, and we need our sheriff as well involved in this. We need leadership from Sheriff Swain. He's, um, it's his purview to imp make these improvements and make, um, make our community a better and safer place. So I'm gonna stop. I've gone on and on and on. Um, but we, we can do a lot of things. Um, we have to, to be purposeful and careful about it. Um, but I really, I'm really looking forward to working on this uh, personally and collaboratively. Thanks. Thank you. And um, uh, Mr. Deckard. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you also to everyone that has come out, not only in this meeting, but past meetings. 
that has written messages, that has contacted us. One of the things that is the best about local government is that we are your neighbors. We are the folks that um, we live among you. You know, um, I, I like to think that we try to be the most accessible with this, everything that we do, and hopefully we get that done. I have a great deal of experience with uh, many members of our law enforcement community, and um, I have been in awe of the stories that I've heard about individuals and the things that they do. And I, I look at those stories and those headlines and, and it blows my mind. I got a, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and criminology along with political science. And I tell you what, um, it's probably better. It's not me doing some of those things. I'm in awe of some of these folks. I'm in awe of these families that, that wait at home for hours and go through all sorts of things. And I, I, and, and I, I'm not fully capturing it there. I've also had experience myself earlier this year where uh, not our sheriff's department, but the Bloomington police were quite helpful to me in, in protecting someone that is more precious to me than my own life. And I think we all understand that. Where I reach a point as a public servant where I, I always kind of get my eyebrows up just a little bit with concern is that while I am a, I'm a Deckard, my gosh, my family's been in this county eight generations. I'm a white male, Methodist, straight. I have a lot of privilege as I walk around the world. I walk around a country that has dealt with awfulness in racism. You could look at a post I made on Facebook on how systems, you know, our founders, they did great things, but just as they did it, they simultaneously really, they really gave us one on this. And, and, and for me, it wasn't so bad, but for black and brown Americans, very problematic. And I think that years of slavery and years of segregation and years of issue upon issue up to today has not helped any number of us, but particularly black and brown people. And we just got to be cognizant of that because the founders, they gave us that. And here we are in 2020 dealing with that. So what I have said consistently or tried to throughout all this is um, I know that there gets a lot of ideas and theories and beliefs and practices, and I appreciate every bit of that. But I think it becomes more about being incumbent on all of us that work in our own segment of the law enforcement community about doing what we need to do to make sure that we're, we're guaranteeing to every citizen, black, brown, white, otherwise, that they have that safety and access and that feeling of comfort. We've seen stories that are now coming here and we don't want that. Everyone that has spoke, I've not had one person say, Councilman Deckard, I want a, a, a less safe community. I've not heard one person. So it becomes incumbent on us to honor not only our officers, but our citizens in making sure everything that we do has um, the protection of every citizen that they feel safe with that. Now that's, that's a lot of words. It's not easy to do. If it were easy, we probably would have had it done by now. This is what we have to do. I think Kate spoke to a lot on that. So I appreciate everyone that came out. I appreciate everyone that's speaking up and they love their community because, my gosh, I do too. When you love your community, you want to make sure that community is accessible for everybody, and that's what we're always making sure. That will require leadership from every single one of us, every single person and people with greater expertise than me. And I appreciate that. So thank you very much. I hope that that has helped bring some clarity to where my mind is on things as we move forward. We will work with the sheriff on the next budget. We will figure out what's in that, what we've got to do with that and other things, et cetera. But it's just part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Deckard, and thanks everybody for uh, all of the eloquent comments tonight. I've, I've got just a few things here and then we'll wrap it up. Um, you know, we've got close to 100 people still on this meeting. 
And, uh, you know, I can tell you in my time on county council, at the end of a meeting, if we had more than two or three people, it was a really positive night. Um, so this is, this is great to see. And I appreciate all of the input from the public. And it truly is uh, my greatest honor to sit here in this position and be able to um, be involved in these issues that are so important, clearly. This is an important issue, and I appreciate the public for coming out tonight, as they have in nights before and in meetings before, and very passionately made their pleas for what they believe in and what they think is right and how we should be uh, allocating their very precious tax dollars. I get it, and I appreciate that so much. Um, I also want to reiterate something that Council Member Wiltz uh, mentioned earlier in her comments is that there is no proposal on the table to defund the sheriff's office at this point. What we have done is uh, held a series of meetings where we've listened to the public and their input and their ideas for how we can approach this issue. Um, and that is all very helpful to me in forming uh, how I will shape my decision making. There is nothing more important to me uh, in matters of public policy than resident input. Absolutely nothing. That is the most important factor in my decision making is the input of residents on these issues. And that is all we have done at this point. We have listened. I think that uh, you know my philosophy of public service and for elected officials is that when you have constituents are, who are concerned, you should be listening. And so I'm proud and, and happy that we have all done that. And I will continue to listen and continue to be educated on these issues that are so important to the public. Um, again, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, this is, um, you know, these, these meetings can be long, uh, but it's, it's absolutely imperative that we get the feedback and we get the input. Uh, so just before I, uh, before we, uh, uh, in the meeting here, I did want to ask council to weigh in on a statement uh, that I have uh, uh, put together here, uh, uh, something that I think, you know, I would like to see us officially adopt, uh, put on the website uh, as an official statement in light of some of the very concerning, disturbing, tragic events that we've seen happen here uh, within the confines of Monroe County and around the country in uh, recent uh, days, weeks, and months. And so I'm gonna read this statement. Uh, I would appreciate your input on this. And I would ask that, um, you know, if we agree that this is something we want to adopt, that we get this on the website and we can do a roll call vote on that uh, afterwards. So, um, the statement would be uh, the Monroe County Council recognizes that for far too long, systemic racism in our society has brought grave harm to the lives of black, indigenous, people of color across our nation. It is particularly disturbing when hateful, violent and racist acts occur within the borders of Monroe County as witnessed in recent weeks. The Monroe County Council believes vehemently that Black Lives Matter. We stand united in our condemnation of all acts of racism and white supremacy in our community and beyond. And most importantly, we as elected leaders are committed to becoming more anti-racist in our own actions and in the local government policies under the control of the County Council as we strive to continuously improve the quality of life for the people of Monroe County. So I just um, would like to know your thoughts on that. And if this is something that we would like to uh, take an official stance on, I'd, I'd like to get this published uh, so that the world can see uh, what our position is. Any discussion? Yes, Ms. Wilkes. Um, I thank you for putting that statement together. I appreciate it and I think it's uh, definitely worthy of putting on our website and I would support that. 
Thank you. Mr. Iverson, did you have a comment? Yeah. I thought I, I like that statement very much. I think that sums up uh, exactly uh, where we are right now in history and where we need to be as a council. Um, and I'm willing to make a motion if need be. Yes, we need a formal motion. Uh, do, should I, do you want me to go ahead and make a motion make right now? <laughs> yeah. uh, I move to uh, adopt the motion or the statement that Councilor Spoonmore just read. And uh, upon its adoption, I move that it be posted on the website of the Monroe County Council. Second. second. Here we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I would just Paul, add, I, uh, Mr. Deckard. I, I, I agree with the sentiment of the resolution. I think it speaks to the, the, the substance of some of the things that I said earlier, and uh, I would support it as well. Ms. Hawk, did you? Yes. Um, I mean, it's clear that the Democratic caucus got together and came up with this, and I appreciate that. And if the Republicans were in charge, we'd have our own little statement too. Um, I heard about this just what, two hours ago, or before the meeting started, uh, maybe two hours before then, uh, I really haven't had an opportunity to take a hard look at it and see whether or not I might have made any changes. It's not uh, something that the council put together. Uh, it's something that the caucus put together. Um, I want to make it very clear. I support my black friends, my friends of color. I don't support the movement that I believe has been taken over and interspersed with um, actions that really do not represent what I believe that the movement started out to be. Um, I have very grave concerns about some of the violent actions and so forth that I've seen. I'm not saying here in Monroe County, but throughout the United States, throughout the world. And so I, I just, it, it puts you in a spot of saying, Yes, I want to support my friends of color. I want to support black lives. But the, this political movement is not something I can support with what I have seen uh, in the last few months. The destruction of the cities, the uh, blocking of, of the bridges, uh, the absolute terror and tyranny it's put in the in the country. So that's not a movement, a political movement, because that's what it is. It's a political movement, and and it's lost its original intent. And so, but I wish you well. Uh, and I could have very well left this meeting, taking care of my dog, and not even got in on this. Uh, but it's uh, the will of the majority of this council and you must go ahead and operate as you would like. Okay, thank you. And so I'm going to leave the meeting. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll move forward with just a quick roll call vote here. Actually, can I just make one yes. quick comment? No, I just yep. wanted to comment that I know that um, Councillor Munson was unavailable because of, uh, of having to go out of town on an emer absolutely last second emergency. Yeah. She really wishes she could be there. I know she listened to uh, some uh, or much of the meeting, but was unable to participate because of that. And uh, she's very sorry that she's not able to, to vote as well. Yes, thank, thank you for that update. Okay, so on Mr. Iverson's motion, we'll take a, a vote. On the motion to place the statement as presented by Councillor Spoonmore on the Monroe County Council webpage. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Wilkes. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay. Well, that concludes. Uh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, could you just forward a copy of that to Megan and I, please? I will, yep. Thank you. Um, and, that, and so this, this will conclude our, uh, our meeting tonight.
and we are adjourned. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Have a good evening.